Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. My plants have billions of evil points. Chapter 1, 1991, June. Among the field ridges full of idyllic scenery, a little boy about 10 years old squatted on the ground, staring at a small grass beside the field ridge. It was a very common dogtail grass, swaying in Sha Tien's wind. But the little boy looked at the dog's tail grass as if he was looking at some rare treasure. He raised his hand carefully, and lightly touched the ears of the dog's tail grass with his fingers. The air was rippling like water waves, and the dog tail grass suddenly grew at a speed visible to the naked eye, especially the fluffy ears, which became full, like a mature rice plant. It really works. The system is real. The little boy looked at the miraculous change of the dog tail grass, and his clear eyes showed a burst of excitement. The boy's name is Leonard Wilhelm, and now he is an unusual boy just over 11 years old. The reason why he is extraordinary is that before he came to this world, he was a professional scavenger who specialized in bounty work. The name in the past is not important anymore. After traveling to this world, he is Leonard, a country boy living in Cotswolds, England. And when he was 11 years old, Leonard felt that he had finally obtained his gold finger, plant master system. This system gave Leonard the ability to domesticate plants and optimize them with skills. For example, when he heard about the ability to optimize the foxtail just now, the system also gave a prompt at the same time. You have used the talent skill, optimize growth, increase the maturity of the target, and randomly obtain beneficial mutations for the host. Grass Sataria. Variation direction, food value and nutrition increased by 1000%. Call, system, open the panel. After confirming the authenticity of the system, Leonard couldn't wait to open the panel that came with the system. Host, Leonard, Junior Plant Apprentice, 0 100s. Talent Skill, Optimized Growth, Stimulates Plant Growth and Produces Beneficial Mutations. The panel is crude, but Leonard has no doubts about its function. You must know that what he optimized just now was just a foxtail plant that was used as fodder for cattle and horses, but after optimization, it almost became its close relative rice. What does that mean? That means Leonard sent it. At a young age, he can buy a farm in the future and become a rich man just by farming. When he grows up, he can become an agricultural scientist, transforming seeds to gain both fame and fortune. That's a lot more than being a scavenger and doing bounties. With complex emotions, the labor and management are so awesome, and, shift, it will take at least seven years for the labor and management to become awesome, Leonard walked slowly towards home. Cotswolds is a place with beautiful scenery, which has become a very famous scenic spot characterized by the preservation of the English pastoral scenery to a great extent. And Leonard's home is part of this idyllic landscape, a farm on the very edge of the village. He lived on the farm with his only relative, his grandfather, and relying on this farm, Grandfather Londo supported Leonard. As for the parents of Leonard's body, he has never seen them. According to the neighbors, they seem to have died in a car accident. It seems that the parents of the Traverser are really bad enough. Leonard's grandfather was an old man with a weird temper, he treated Leonard well, but his moody temper was like something bad happened to him in childhood. If Leonard hadn't been a mature traveler, he might have turned into a gloomy and introverted child. Back home, the unlit house was a little dark, but Leonard was sure his grandfather was still at home, because he rarely went to town. He used to go to the town to buy some necessities when Leonard was young, but after Leonard was eight years old, he just sent Leonard to do the shopping. Fortunately, the farm is self-sufficient and only needs to sell some salt or spices, otherwise Leonard would have no way to buy things back. Grandfather Londo seemed to look down on the people in the town, not because of poverty or wealth, but a kind of contempt from above. Leonard didn't know how a country old man could be so high-spirited. In the dark, he picked up a box of matches and lit the kerosene lamp at the door. Leonard carried the kerosene lamp and walked towards the room. Here I have to mention the most unreasonable thing Leonard thinks about his grandfather Londo, that is, it is the 20th century, yet there are still people without electricity at home. There are no electrical appliances, no agricultural equipment, and farming is done manually. If it weren't for the many animal products at home, Leonard would suspect that his grandfather was an extreme environmentalist. Grandpa, I'm back. Leonard walked into the living room with a kerosene lamp, and found his grandfather Londo sitting on his favorite buckskin rug, 
holding a letter in his hand, with a sad or happy expression on his face. Could it be that he was sick? Leonard's heart skipped a beat. After all, his grandfather was not young, and he might become old and confused at some point. Are you okay? Leonard quickly stepped forward and grabbed Loon Duo's arm, trying to help him up, but just as his outstretched hand touched Loon Duo's arm, he was caught by the opponent's iron-like palm. The kerosene lamp shattered on the floor, and the dripping kerosene set Rondo's favorite rug on fire, but he didn't care, staring wildly at Leonard. Leonard, you have been admitted to Hogwarts. Leonard looked up at his grandfather blankly. What the hell, Hogwarts, is this Harry Potter's world? I have already thought about what to do in the future, you want me to be a wizard now. Loon Duo was very emotional, and he babbled a lot out of his gloomy personality in the past. For example, what a great school Hogwarts is, how fascinating the world of magic is, and how mysterious and noble the status of wizards is. What he said was messy, and it was difficult for Leonard, who was a scumbag in his previous life, to listen. After all, he learned English in this life, and his vocabulary was only as good as an 11-year-old boy should have. But even guessing, plus Leonard's understanding of the world of Harry Potter, he understood roughly. Leonard's grandfather, Rondo Wilhelm, was a squib, that is, someone who was born into a wizarding family but had no talent for magic. Such people are despised, rejected by wizards, and even regarded as shame by wizard families. So Rondo Wilhelm was sent away early, cut off from the wizarding world, married and had children as a muggle. But Rondo Wilhelm has always felt that he is more noble than muggles. Although he is an untalented squib, he can see everything in the wizarding world, which makes him suffer while looking down on his family members who live together. Before Leonard's father was 11 years old, he was still expected to enjoy the twisted fatherly love of Londo Wilhelm, but after Leonard's father was 11 years old and did not receive the admission letter from Hogwarts, he he completely lost his father's love. At the same time, because he couldn't bear Londo Wilhelm's strange temper, Leonard's father left the family early to wander outside, got married and had children and never returned to the family. Until he had an accident, leaving the newborn Leonard behind. The time Leonard traveled back was after the accident, he was sent to the farm of Londo Wilhelm by the police and became a country boy. No wonder Londo doesn't want to get in touch with people in the town, no wonder he doesn't like electrical appliances, because he despises common people from the bottom of his heart. It's hard for the father of this body, he will never know why his father became so strange around the age of 11. Just because he didn't get the admission letter from Hogwarts. At night, Londo Wilhelm took out his treasured brandy and got himself completely drunk. While drinking, he howled like a night owl, not so much being happy as venting his inner distress. Leonard was in his room, listening to his grandfather go berserk while reading the letter from Hogwarts in his hand. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Principal, Albus Dumbledore. President of the International Federation of Wizards, winner of the Order of Merlin First Class Medal, Big Magic Mage, Chief Magic Mage of the Wizengamot. Dear Mr. Wilhelm, it is my pleasure to inform you that you have been approved to study at Hogwarts. A list of books and equipment is enclosed with this letter. The semester is scheduled to start on September 1st, and we will wait for your all to bring your reply before July 31st. Sincerely, Deputy Principal, Female, Minerva McGonagall. A very formal and formatted letter, Leonard can imagine a quill that can write by itself writing these words on the letter paper that keeps appearing on the table. Hogwarts, it's really exciting. Leonard thought longingly. Suddenly, a system prompt sounded in Leonard's ear. It is detected that the host has been notified of admission to Hogwarts, and the system update begins. Update completed. System update. There was a change in the system just activated, which made Leonard a little baffled, but he didn't panic, because after knowing the existence of Hogwarts and his own magical talent, he didn't care much about this gold finger that optimizes plants. Optimizing plants, can that be compared to eating a big melon? However, Leonard soon learned how wrong he was. The system update is complete, the magical plant module has been activated, the talent has been activated, and you have obtained the talent, friends of plants. Plant friend, you have gained the friendship of all plants. The novice guidance has been activated, the system will issue tasks to guide the host to understand the new functions of the system. The prompts from the system rang in Leonard's ears one after another, and before he could react, the so-called novice guidance had already started. 
The novice mission has started. Mission 1. Obtain a magical plant of your own. Task reward. 10 points of experience, innate skill enhancement once. Amazing plants. Leonard's eyes lit up. Yes, there are many special plants in the magical world. Some of these plants have special abilities, and some have medicinal value and can be used to make potions. Their value is much higher than that of common plants. His ability to optimize plants can be used on magical plants, so although Leonard can't get stronger magic power or spells, it can make him the most successful herb merchant in the wizarding world. Moreover, the system actually evolved after he received the admission notice from Hogwarts, and even prepared a novice guide thoughtfully. This gave Leonard more confidence. Next, I'm going to go shopping in Diagon Alley, and buy magical plants by the way. Leonard got into bed, and began to look forward to tomorrow's trip to Diagon Alley. Because Grandpa Rendo is a squib, no professor will come to Leonard's house to mobilize. After all, professors need to go all over the country to popularize the common sense of the magic world to those muggle families, and even try to persuade those muggles who don't believe in magic to believe that the Hogwarts admission notice is not a bad joke. After all, 11 years old is when the child is going to middle school. If there is no definite news, muggle families will not put the child's future in a magic school that does not know whether it is true or not. Leonard's family was not so troublesome. Although Rondo was a squib, he knew that the wizarding world would not be affected by the muggle-repelling curse, so he could go to Diagon Alley to buy what he needed. Early the next morning, Leonard was awakened by Grandfather Rondo's knock on the door. Get up, you lazy, are you going to get up when the sun is drying your ass? Leonard slowly got up, and glanced at the old pocket watch on the bedside, the thick hands had just pointed to six. It's only six o'clock, Leonard complained loudly. We're going to London, it's ours. Rondo shouted, pack up and hurry up. Leonard rubbed his face, got up from the bed, and opened the door. Ren Duo stood at the door in a hurry as if he was being burned. It was Leonard who was going to school, but he was in a hurry as if he was going to school. Come on boy, we're going to town to catch a train, and when we get to London we're going to the Leaky Cauldron right away, and I don't want to stay a second longer among those muggles. Loon Duo spoke loudly, refreshed, he seemed to have not slept all night, his body was full of alcohol but he was not tired from the whole night at all. As soon as Leonard finished washing, Loon Duo stuffed him with a sandwich, and hurriedly dragged Leonard out. Cotswolds is a very famous tourist attraction, so the transportation here is quite convenient. But it was too far away from London, and by the time the two arrived at Charing Cross Road, where the leaky cauldron was, it was already past two o'clock in the afternoon. Ren Duo said that he was unwilling to eat out, so he dragged the hungry Leonard into the leaky cauldron without stopping. The leaky cauldron is just like its name, very broken and old, and the owner of the bar is also an old man who looks old. This place is much bigger than Leonard imagined, but the atmosphere here makes it difficult for Leonard to adapt. However, Loon Duo seemed to have walked into a palace, his eyes full of longing. Anyway, Leonard didn't see how the wizards eating bean stew in this shabby pub were more noble than the muggles outside. After coming here, London's mobility became very strong. After agreeing with the bar owner Tom, he temporarily stored his luggage here, and then begged the other party to help open the wall leading to Diagon Alley. Rendo took Leonard directly to Gringotts, the wizarding bank, and immediately came to Ollivander's wand shop on the same street after changing a hundred galleons. In fact, Leonard wanted to go to the shop that sold fresh magical plants first, but he couldn't hold back Rondo, he wanted to see the wand first. Ding dong! The bell at the door swayed and made a crisp sound. Londo and Leonard walked into the store, watching the neatly packaged wands piled up on the shelves, and Londo's eyes turned red. Welcome. A gray-haired old man poked his head out from behind the shelf and looked at the two of them. Hi sir, let's pick out the wand. Londo said in a flattering tone when he saw the old man. Oh no, it's not you who choose the wand, the wand will choose its own master. The gray-haired old man said seriously. Loon Duo's expression suddenly became uneasy, and he said anxiously, I'm sorry, I'm too superficial. His reaction was so violent that it startled the gray-haired old man. It's not that serious, it's just my own opinion. The gray-haired old man explained helplessly, I'm the owner of this store, Garrick Ollivander. He glanced at Leonard, a freshman at Hogwarts. Yes, Leonard nodded. 
What is your name? asked Ollivander, pulling out an old thick notepad. Leonard, Leonard Wilhelm, Leonard said. Ollivander looked in his notepad with his reading glasses. Oh, let me see, um, there was no Wilhelm in the previous generation. Are you from a muggle family? Ah, Leonard glanced at Loon Duo, and was about to say no, but he didn't expect Loon Duo to speak first. That's right, Rondo said. The kid's parents are muggles, I'm his grandfather, and I. I'm a muggle too. In the wizarding world, squibs have an even lower status than muggles, who are no more than beginners, but squibs are a disgrace to wizards. Ha ha ha, it's okay, don't be nervous, as long as you are talented, you are a part of the wizard, your background doesn't matter. Ollivander smiled, and wrote down Leonard's name on the notepad, let's measure the necessary data, and then we can find a wand that suits you. Ollivander knocked on the counter and a set of measuring tools came out from the corner, bouncing up to Leonard, and began to measure strange data for him. Arm length and height are nothing, the distance between the eyes and nostrils is outrageous, and Leonard even glimpsed a small ruler to measure the width of his nostrils. Was it the fear of sticking a wand up his own nostril? Fortunately, this embarrassing measurement session ended soon. Ollivander looked at Leonard's measurement results, tapped his forehead with his wand and stood up. He came to a shelf and rummaged through something. Soon he found a blue box and brought it to Leonard. Sakura wood, unicorn tail hair, nine and a quarter inches, a sensitive little thing. Ollivander pulled it out and handed it to Leonard. Leonard took the wand, and felt an uncontrollable force pulling his arm as soon as he took it. Boom, a shelf exploded, spilling the wands on it. The wand boxes on the shelves seemed to jump up a bit. No, not too good, too excited. Ollivander shook his head and took his wand back from Leonard's hand. Leonard was a little strange, he obviously felt the emotion of the wand, and thought it was the wand suitable for him, but unexpectedly, it behaved like this. Try the next one. Ollivander brought another wand, applewood, phoenix feather, ten inches, a gentle wand. Leonard took the wand, feeling the emotion from the wand again. I didn't feel the tenderness, but it felt like a warm golden retriever to him. He waved subconsciously, and a flame shot out from the tip of the wand, almost igniting Ollivander's beard. A wand box on a nearby shelf opened by itself, and a threaded wand jumped out. Ollivander glanced at the wand suspiciously, picked it up and put it back. No, try this, Hawthorne. Another shelf collapsed, and more wands jumped out, and Ollivander had to use magic to send them back into the box. Then this, classic winter Aoki. The vase by the door burst. Ren Duo's expression became distorted, and he didn't know whether he was calculating the damages that would be compensated later or thinking about something else. Poplar trees don't work either. Putting away a wand again, Ollivander shook his head and said helplessly, it's a bit difficult. I might not find a wand that suits you here. The corners of Leonard's eyes twitched, looking at the Ollivander's wand shop that was about to be blown into ruins, he didn't know what to say. This. Mr. Ollivander, what does this mean? Doesn't my grandson have talent? Londo asked nervously. No, no, it's not that there is no talent, but too much talent. Ollivander beamed with joy, the reason why he is not suitable for the previous wand is because the wand he holds in his hand is too excited, which means that any wand in the his hands can emit a different kind of brilliance. He looked at the other wand boxes around him again, I should have felt it just now, these wands seem to be a little impatient. Any wand will do. I didn't expect that I was still a sweet pastry. Leonard thought about it for a while, and it was absolutely possible that it had something to do with the innate ability of his plant friend. Although the literal explanation is to gain the friendship of any plant, such as Whooping Willow, the big guy should not smoke him. To some extent, the wand also carries the will of the plant, especially in the hands of Ollivander, a master wand maker. The will of the plant is combined with the core of the wand to form the consciousness of the wand. Although the wand has been processed, it retains the feeling of this kind of plant, which is why it is so favored by Leonard. This is amazing. I doubt that even the most loyal ash tree will abandon its master and choose your grandson. Ollivander said excitedly. Rondo didn't understand why Ollivander was excited, he only heard that Leonard could use any wand, then why don't you pick a wand at random? He was a little anxious. At this time, his psychology was like an old father who was afraid that his daughter would not be able to marry, 
a poor guy who was worried that Leonard would become unable to enter the magical world because of a little accident. No, of course not. Those wands are only suitable, not suitable. Students who buy wands from me must find a wand that suits them. Ollivander said proudly. But didn't you say that there is no wand suitable for me here? Leonard said softly. That refers to the ones that are sold on the shelves. They are all relatively common types, which is normal. After all, there are not many people as special as you. Ollivander clamped his wand to his ear, turned around and walked away. A box with the words, semi-finished product, written on it was taken out from the counter. In fact, I have also made some wands made of special materials, but they are not finished. Ollivander opened the box, revealing a straight wand with knuckle-shaped protrusions. The moment he saw this wand, Leonard felt a sense of confusion, because the familiar shape reminded him of the one that was held in the hand of the headmaster of Hogwarts, Albus Dumbledore, when he watched a movie in his previous life. The Elder Wand, the strongest wand in Legendary. But shouldn't that thing have always been in Dumbledore's hands? What's up with this stick in Ollivander's hand? This is an elderberry wand. Compared with other materials, elderberry is more picky about its owner. I think this proud character may make it a little more reserved. Ollivander took it out, but instead of handing it to Leonard, he pointed to the empty hole at the bottom of the wand. It's not quite a wand yet, and I'm going to have to put a handle on it after the core, which makes it a bit too long, about 15 inches. Quote. Can't it be shorter? Leonard asked curiously. A 15-inch wand might be a bit of a struggle to swing, and he probably couldn't use his small arms and legs. That can't be done. The length of the wand is a very serious matter. It involves the stability and effect of the wand. The 15-inch elder wand is the most suitable and stable. Ollivander explained patiently. He handed Leonard the half-finished wand, hold it and tell me how it feels. Can you feel it without the core? Leonard asked curiously. It's hard, but I feel like you should be able to, Ollivander said. Leonard took the wand suspiciously, and the wand felt a little different the moment he got it. Compared with other feedbacks that seem to lick dogs, the attitude of this wand is a bit like Miss Sunere. But Leonard could still feel a little excitement from the half-finished wand. There still seems to be a little bit of excitement, Leonard said. Still a little excited, Ollivander's eyes widened. This is not so good, Leonard asked. No, but, how should I put it, it's nothing to the wand-making industry, but to me, and to you, it's a great thing. Ollivander looked very excited. We can suppress the excitement of elderberry with a more aggressive core. This is not even possible for dragon heartstrings. I recommend the tail feathers of Festrals. Is there anything special about this match? Leonard asked blankly. Of course, this is the material combination of the Elder Wand in Legendary, which is the most powerful wand in the world. Leonard's expression was a little frozen, he wondered if the old man in front of him was still rational. Loon Duo's expression was shocked. Although he was a squib, he had also stayed in a wizard's family. Of course, he had also read Peter Bean Wang's tales and knew the story of the three brothers and the god of death. Ollivander took a deep breath to calm down his excitement. Virtually every master wandmaker has tried this pairing, but the noble elder with the unstable Thestral tail feathers is a disaster, and there is no stable elder with any other than the elder wand the wand of Thestral tail feathers. Then why do you think you'll succeed this time? Leonard asked. Because of your talent, your presence can make the elderberry favor you unreservedly, and it will help you suppress the instability of the Thestral's tail feathers, which is an advantage that others do not have. Ollivander sighed and said, this will be your only elder wand. Dash, listening to Ollivander's words made people excited, anyway, Rondo was still dizzy when he left Ollivander's wand shop. Leonard didn't feel anything, he just felt helpless after leaving Ollivander's wand shop empty-handed, which meant that he would still need to go with other wizards if he wanted to enter Diagon Alley in the next few days. Ollivander said he would need at least 10 days to make the, Leonard's only elder wand, during which Leonard would not be able to practice magic with the wand. But Leonard didn't feel bored, and this time was just for him to study his own system. I bought all the textbooks at Lihan Bookstore, and ordered three sets of black robes and a winter cloak at Mrs. Malkin's robe shop. Mrs. Malkin's robe store customizes robes for Hogwarts students all the year round, 
so there is no need for additional instructions, just tell her that she is a Hogwarts student, and after measuring the size, she can wait to get the clothes. Then there are crucibles, telescopes, scales, dragon leather gloves and other items needed for learning. Of course, an owl is indispensable. In fact, students don't have to buy owls. Letters to Hogwarts can be sent at the Owl Post Office in Diagon Alley. You can choose other pets, such as cats, mice, and toads. The former is a pet, and the latter two are experimental products for pets and medicine. Although Leonard is not a serious fan of Kazakhstan, it is good to buy an owl to experience the joy of protecting animals as pets. After buying these things, Leonard set his sights on the herbal shop in Diagon Alley. His first novice mission, owning a magical plant of his own, probably started here. Slugzig's Pharmacy Leonard looked up at the signboard, then at the store, with a hesitant look on his face. There was a disgusting smell coming from the dark shop. Outside the shop near the street were wooden boxes full of wriggling leeches, black dried bats, and writhing dried mandela grass that made a faint sound. Just looking at it makes people shudder. Leonard, let's go, there's nothing to see here. Loon Duo, who is confident in his status as a wizard, couldn't stand it anymore, and wanted to stay away from this shop as soon as possible. I want to buy something. Leonard explained, touched the pocket money that Loon Duo gave him in his arms, glanced at the strange things at the door, and walked into the pharmacy without hesitation. Welcome to Slug Zig's Pharmacy, I'm Ziggs the boss here. A middle-aged man with greasy sticky hair and unkempt came out, a kid who looks like he just entered school. What do you want to buy? Ah, I want to buy a magical plant, or the seeds of a magical plant, Leonard said. What do you want the magic plant for? Did someone send you here? Giggs squatted down with a suspicious expression, while a strange bitter smell wafted into Leonard's nose. Leonard took a step back subconsciously, held his breath and said, I came here by myself. I'm very curious about magical plants, so I want to buy some. They're all dangerous, kid, especially for a kid like you who hasn't learned anything. Ziggs scratched his hair, dandruff falling like snowflakes. That bird snake egg yolk shampoo doesn't work at all, he muttered. Then you can recommend me something less dangerous, but don't be too boring, I don't want to look at a boring potted plant. Leonard said in a child's tone. Tisk, impatient brat. Ziggs shook his head and stood up, let me think about it, according to your request, there is probably only one magical plant here that can satisfy you. As he spoke, he walked to the back of the shop and took out a flower pot covered with a black cloth. What do you think of this? It's not very dangerous, but it's interesting enough. Giggs said as he tore off the black cloth covering the flower pot, revealing a strangely colored cabbage. Leonard looked at the strangely colored cabbage, and then at Giggs, his eyes full of contempt and suspicion that the sloppy shopkeeper was cheating on children. Ha, huh, you don't believe it. Giggs saw the contempt in Leonard's eyes, and took out a voided bill from the counter and put it on the cabbage. Just as Leonard looked blankly at what Giggs was doing, the seemingly ordinary cabbage, which seemed to be just a strange color, suddenly sprang up and split from the middle, revealing the sharp white teeth. The bill was torn to shreds between the opening and closing of the cabbage, showing the sharpness of the teeth. Those sharp teeth are no decoration. Leonard was dumbfounded. Seeing Leonard's expression very satisfied, Giggs picked up the skeleton of an unknown animal from the table and put it next to the mouth of the cabbage. With a click, the bone broke and shattered into two pieces. The bite force of this thing is not weak. How is it? Not bad, Ziggs said proudly, this thing is called biting cabbage, a very common potion ingredient, it is very dangerous, and its teeth can even bite through dragon leather gloves. If it can grow in the ground, it is estimated that trading will be restricted. Giggs was very proud to see Leonard's gradually dull expression. I want it, how much? Leonard asked impatiently. Are you really going to want it? Don't you think it's dangerous? Giggs said subconsciously. That's just, well, no, I mean it just looks cool, Leonard said. Okay, if you insist, but I want to remind you that its teeth are really sharp. If your hand is accidentally bitten off, you must go to Saint. Mungo's for treatment as soon as possible. Giggs hesitated, putting Black's cloth over the biting kale, it quieted down. It's much quieter when there's no light, so if you want to touch it you have to be in a dark room, Giggs warned. Five sickles. The sickle is the silver coin of the wizarding world, 17 sickles equals one galleon. 
Okay, I see. Leonard agreed, and counted out five silver coins and handed them to Giggs. The moment the pot of biting kale was handed over to Leonard, a system prompt sounded in his ears. You got biting cabbage, experience plus 2-0. It turns out that getting magical plants can also gain experience, Leonard is a little excited. He thought that experience could only be gained from missions. The system prompt is still going on. As soon as the novice task is completed, the task reward has been issued, you have gained 10 experience, and you have gained a talent skill enhancement. Mission accomplished. Leonard's eyes lit up, and he began to look forward to how his talent would be strengthened. Back at the leaky cauldron, Londo didn't hesitate to open two rooms, which was exactly what Leonard wanted, and he was trying to play with the newly acquired biting kale. However, before returning to his room, Rondo took Leonard's textbook, apparently unwilling to learn magic as a squib. He also took Leonard's owl by the way. Leonard thought his grandfather was dreaming, but he didn't talk about it to break his confidence. After returning to the room, Leonard put the potted plant covered with a black cloth on the table, and first turned on the system to see his talent strengthening. The talent has been strengthened successfully, please choose your strengthening direction. Along with the system prompt, three skill trees appeared in front of Leonard, marking growth, logistics, and combat respectively. At this time, the first grid of the three skill trees can be lit up. These three are the root system enhancement of the growth system, the harvest enhancement of the logistics system, and the super speed growth of the combat system. Root system strengthening. While optimizing plants, it also enhances plant root growth, prolonging plant life by 50%, and output by 70%. Harvest Enhancement. Optimize plants while additionally enhancing the fruit effect of plants, shortening the lifespan of plants by 30%, and increasing the output effect by 100%. Super Speed Growth. It can be used on seeds, which greatly shortens the lifespan of plants, and can make plants grow to maturity in a short time. This is the initial and prerequisite skill of the three departments, and one can choose any one of them to strengthen in a chance to strengthen. The enhanced talent will not change, but choose whether to add this enhancement on the basis of the enhancement. If Leonard gets multiple enhancements later, he can also choose one or more of them to attach to the plants. Strengthening points are not a scarce item, except for the tasks in the novice guidance period, you can get one point every time you level up, and the system also specifically stated that there is no upper limit for the level. So there is no choice faction, as long as Leonard wants, he can have it all. However, in the early stage, try to choose to specialize in one series so that the effect is better. If it is normal, Leonard will definitely choose the growth department or the logistics department first. This kind of effect of increasing the output of raw materials can help Leonard quickly accumulate capital and become the version of the wizarding world. But this is 1991, and this year is the day when the main character Harry Potter enters school. From the moment he enters Hogwarts, known as the safest place in the UK, will become less safe. Choose the combat department first, so that you can guarantee your own safety. Leonard looked at the combat department's skill tree. The first strengthening of the combat system, super speed growth. This should allow Leonard to carry the seeds of some dangerous magical plants, and then he can grow vegetables anytime and anywhere to play plants versus wizards. This is a pre-requirement, Otherwise many plants cannot be carried around, and no amount of strengthening effects will be realized later. You can't let yourself stay in a fixed place all the time, can you? For example, the Whomping Willow in Hogwarts, if he has obtained this enhancement, he can pull the wicker from the Whomping Willow, and when needed, plant it in the ground and let it grow to maturity. It's a short-lived move, but in a short time, Leonard has a strong hitter. So Leonard didn't hesitate, and directly lit up the first enhancement. A surge of vitality surged in his body, and when the active vitality dissipated, Leonard clearly felt his extra abilities. It's a pity that there are no seeds, so I can't try it. And with the lighting of the first enhancement of the combat system, two branches appeared below, corresponding to two different enhancements. Damage Enhancement. Your plants get a certain amount of extra damage. Basic Resistance. Your plants gain a certain degree of magic resistance. One enhances defense and the other enhances attack, both of which are very basic abilities. However, what Leonard noticed was the strengthening on the third floor. Whether it was defense or attack, a branch extended to the reinforcement in the middle of the third floor. 
phagocytosis, obtain different abilities by devouring biological materials. Leonard was moved when he saw this enhancement. As far as he knew, there were many powerful magical animals near Hogwarts. It's a pity that this enhancement still needs two enhancement points to light up. At this time, the system issued a prompt again. Novice Guide Task 2, Optimization of Magical Plants. Optimize your magical plants, task rewards, 10 points of extra experience, 1 point of strengthening points. It seems that the novice guidance belongs to the stage of giving benefits, turning what Leonard originally wanted to do into a task that can be rewarded. This is a good thing. Leonard started the preparations without hesitation. The first thing is to close the doors and windows, draw the curtains to plunge the room into darkness, then he tore off the black cloth and approached the biting cabbage cautiously in the dark. He remembered what Boss Giggs said, although he has the talent to be immune to any magical plants, but Leonard dare not bet on whether this skill will work. He didn't want to lose a finger or two and run off to St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Injuries and Wounds. The biting kale in the dark really became very quiet as Giggs said, even if it was touched by hand, it only moved slightly, as if a sleeping person was snoring. As if feeling the temperature in Leonard's hands, the biting kale rubbed against his palm, like a sleeping dog that felt its master approaching. The touch of a plant has the characteristics of being alive. This novel experience made Leonard a little excited, but he still hadn't forgotten what he was going to do. He released the life force in his body, slowly infiltrating the biting cabbage in front of him. Different from strengthening common plants, after the strengthening started, three pictures appeared in front of Leonard's eyes. The first one is that the biting cabbage grows in the ground and suddenly opens its mouth wide, laying flat on the ground, the body gradually disappears and a rough human figure steps into the mouth of the biting cabbage and a thigh is instantly bitten off. The second picture is that the biting cabbage has been separated from the land and its living characteristics have been strengthened and it can chase the target by jumping and moving. The third picture is the picture of brewing potion. A person added biting cabbage to the potion and brewed a bottle of excellent potion. The three pictures correspond to three strengthening directions, the first is to disguise as a trap and the second is no longer limited to the land, you can move the attack target. The third picture is more blurred, but the effect is probably to increase the efficacy of the medicine. This is the most common strengthening effect, which is similar to the effect of turning foxtail into rice. The third enhancement was directly discarded. This was obviously the effect of the logistics department. With the talent enhancement of the logistics department, the medicinal effect of the biting cabbage could be enhanced to a jaw-dropping level. But what Leonard needs now is combat effects. As for the two different effects of the first and second, Leonard hesitated. The first type is very powerful, but it is limited by the terrain and occasions, and it is unable to take the initiative to attack because it is trapped. The second one is perfect, it just doesn't look very powerful. This is just an enhancement of biting kale, why am I so nervous? Leonard shrugged and chose the second enhancement. This kind of enhancement is not fixed on all biting cabbage seeds. If necessary, Leonard can use different enhancements for different biting cabbage seeds. By the way, he can forcefully ripen countless biting cabbage mines or chase man bites man bites kale. Again, he wants them all. After the strengthening direction was determined, the biting cabbage in the flower pot trembled, the soil swelled, and the roots hidden in the flower pot stirred and retracted into the body of the biting cabbage. Then it jumped out of the pot, completely unimpaired by the dimness of the room. It's done. Leonard smiled and held the gnawing cabbage in his hand, the little guy immediately put his teeth away, like a common cabbage lying obediently in Leonard's palm. You have used the talent skill, optimized growth, increased target maturity, and obtained beneficial mutations. Bite Kale. Gain Mobility. You gained 20 experience points. You have completed the Novice Guidance Task 2, you have gained 10 points of experience, strengthening points plus 1. Junior Plant Apprentice 61 one hundredths. Started with another strengthening point, and I am about to level up, then there will be another strengthening point, so that I can light up the strengthening of devouring. There is no doubt that the next step is the third novice guidance task. Leonard was a little looking forward to the next task. Novice guidance task 3, rookie's first battle. Use existing plants to engage in a plant versus wizard, task reward, 100 experience, 3 enhancement points. The expectant Leonard's expression froze. 
Shouldn't task difficulty be a progressive relationship? Why does the difficulty of the third task rise in a straight line? He was still a child who hadn't learned magic before. Although he was ready to fight, it was the kind of preparation that came step by step as Harry Potter grew up. Why let him participate in the battle at this time? And the limited object must be a wizard. Soon, Leonard, who had calmed down, discovered something serious. He couldn't seem to find a safe way to fight. Reality is not a game, there are no wild monsters that will jump out when the protagonist passes by the roadside, and it's nothing if the protagonist's health bars go to zero if they don't know how to spar. Leonard would bleed and die, and so would others. In order to complete the task of hurting an innocent person, Leonard couldn't do it. So we're looking for those wicked wizards, such as dark wizards. Leonard twitched. This kind of wizard is often very dangerous. They don't care whether they kill an adult or a child, which will greatly increase the difficulty and danger of the task. But relatively, hurting these wizards Leonard is not a bit of psychological pressure. And where to find this kind of wizard Leonard has already thought about it. That's Diagon Alley's sister street, the dark side of the wizarding world, Flip Lane. If Diagon Alley is a sunny avenue where law and order are sound, then Diagon Alley is a dark corner where evil molds breed. Turning to Lane is chaotic and gloomy. Most of the grey trade in the British wizarding world comes from there. Many capable wizards like to go there to buy materials prohibited by the Ministry of Magic. It's hard to tell whether people create the environment or the environment attracts people. The wizards who live there cannot be said to be all bad guys, but every other one will be shot and the other will definitely slip through the net. There is absolutely no problem going there to find a fighting chance. The only problem is Leonard's own safety. It's best to be able to sneak attack. According to the habits of most European wizards, if they don't have a wand, their combat effectiveness will be weakened. Leonard glanced at the biting kale in his hand and suddenly had an idea. As night fell, the kerosene lamps on the side of Diagon Alley lit up automatically one after another, illuminating the deserted streets. There is no nightlife for wizards, and the shops in Diagon Alley are basically closed in the evening. Even the Leaky Cauldron, which is called a bar and is actually more often regarded as a hotel restaurant, few people are drinking. Leonard closed the, thousands of miraculous herbs and mushrooms, in his hand, rubbed his aching eyes and sighed. The kerosene lamp, the light is dim and unstable, and this old room, the creaking bed, the wooden walls that exude an old smell, and the unexplained hangings on the wall. For the same price, he could obviously live in a better room outside, but because of his grandfather Londo's inexplicable arrogance, he had to choose to spend the next two months in the leaky cauldron. With a little distress, Leonard picked up a branch he found outside and threw it out. Rua, a shameful cry was heard, and a cabbage with a strange color jumped up from nowhere and bit the branch with one bite. Unsurprisingly, with a click, the branch broke into three pieces, and then the cabbage jumped in front of Leonard with the piece in its mouth, jumping like a puppy to claim credit. Good job. Leonard touched the biting kale approvingly, and got an even warmer response. Leonard was training the biting kale to bite the wand, and as long as the wand broke, even if the wizard could cast spells without a wand, he would be stunned for a few seconds. But I only have one plant. Leonard squeezed the kale inside. Biting kale has decent attack power, but it's a bit fragile, and Leonard suspects that it doesn't even need any magic, just a simple basic enchantment to blow it up. And he doesn't have a wand now, so he can't freely enter and exit Diagon Alley. Why don't he find a wizard in the middle of the night and tell him, please open the door for me. I want to go to Diagon Alley. The task requirement is to use the existing plants. I didn't say that I can only use the existing plants. After I get the wand, I can teach myself a few magic spells to assist. Leonard thought about it and felt that there was nothing wrong with his idea. For magic, you can start by familiarizing yourself with gestures and spells. After Mr. Ollivander's wand is ready, you can try to turn to the alley. Now that the plan has been made, there is no need for Leonard to delay. He jumped off the chair, ran out the door and knocked on the door of the room next door in London. After about tens of seconds, Loon Duo opened the door slowly. What are you doing so late? Loon Duo asked with a displeased face. For this old man, Leonard has already figured out his temper. The shadow of his childhood makes his face look like he has lost his happiness, and he will never have a good face. I'm here to get the spell book. 
Leonard said directly, the elementary standard spells, and my owl. Rondo glared at Leonard, and the expression on his face became a little colder, but Leonard's expression did not change at all, and he looked up at Rondo. In the end, Loon Duo looked away first and asked, what do you want them for at this time? Learning in advance, I think it is very necessary, I don't want to be inferior to those children born in pure blood wizard families. Leonard said seriously, if you really need it, you can keep that book of magic theory. By the way, the owl can let you hear too. Leonard negotiated terms with Rondo like coaxing a child. Loon Duo's expression relaxed a little, he thought for a while, turned around and handed Leonard the elementary standard spells. Look carefully, study hard. Lon Duo reminded, and then closed the door. Leonard pouted, and returned to the room with the book in hand. The first thing he did was to open the table of contents and look at the spells recorded on it. The first chapter of the elementary standard spells records the method of guiding the magic power in the body, and releases a magic power impact with a certain power. This is the basic spell, something that can be done with hands, there are no special gestures, and no spells are required. If magic is a skill, then the basic spell is a common attack. Underage little wizards like Leonard have very little magical power in their bodies, especially those that can be released. It is estimated that the damage of the fist of an adult common is similar to that of an adult common. Leonard continued to read, more and more disappointed. This standard spell book deserves to be called, elementary. There are not many powerful spells in it, it is nothing more than, flash spells, levitation spells, and other spells. How does this kind of magic deal with the dark wizard who turned over to the alley? But I don't think I can learn too complicated magic, Leonard said to himself. He turned the book to the page of the flashing spell, intending to learn the flashing spell. If you don't have offensive jinxes, learn supportive jinxes. In the dark, even if the flashing spell that lights up suddenly has no attack power, it will make people unable to see the surrounding situation clearly. This is long enough to bite into the kale. In the room, Leonard took a branch picked up from the roadside as a magic wand, following the track in the book, imitating it to the letter. Next to it, biting kale wobbles from side to side as Leonard moves, like a puppy looking at a bone. Luminescent flashes, Leonard shouted, waving the branch in his hand. The branch didn't respond, which didn't make Leonard feel down, but rather normal. Casting spells without a wand is an advanced skill. How could he, a rookie who doesn't even know magic, cast it so easily? It is not that wizards cannot use magic without a wand. In the history of magic, it is mentioned that wizards in Africa almost do not use magic wands because of the lack of corresponding wood. But that requires considerable proficiency, and the growth rate of wizards in Africa is much slower than that of wizards in other regions. Leonard might be able to learn this trick too if he practiced a lot. The behavior seemed silly because there was no feedback, but Leonard persisted and made sure that his actions were exactly as in the book. Only in this way can he ensure that his study does not go astray. During Leonard's practice, Loon Duo made excuses to come several times, but he didn't say anything after seeing Leonard's tireless practice of spells, but returned his textbooks one after another. It seemed that his own grandfather had given up trying in vain. Leonard wiped his sweat, rubbed his sore wrist, and planned to do something else to rest. At this moment, there was a knock on his door. Is it coming again? Leonard muttered, waved his hand at the biting cabbage next to him, watched it go back into the flower pot, and then replied loudly, here it is. Opening the door, sure enough, standing outside was his grandfather Londo, and at the same time he was holding a birdcage with a grey owl inside. Now even the owl is back. Leonard took the birdcage from Loon Duo with a clear look. Loon Duo looked at Leonard, who was sweating profusely, and said in silence for a while, I'm going back. As he spoke, he stuffed the remaining fifty galleons into Leonard's hands. Ha, huh, Leonard was taken aback, almost unable to react. Only then did he notice his suitcase at Rondo's feet. I said, I'm going back. Loon Duo repeated, the farm at home still needs to be taken care of, and the rent here is too expensive. Leonard opened his mouth to say that we can share a room, but he froze when he opened his mouth. After he got the wand, he would definitely go back to the alley at night, and if he shared a room with Rondo, he would definitely be found. And Loon Duo probably gave up on leaving at this time, right? Even though magic is so close to him, he can only watch but not grasp it. 
you have to be careful by yourself, don't run around, you know. You can be with other Hogwarts students who live here when the school starts. Ren Duo said concerned words with a blank face, and then mentioned his own the suitcase turned and left. Remember to send a letter home. Don't come back during Christmas. It's too far away. I'll pick you up at King's Cross Station during the summer vacation. Leonardo left Leonard with a lonely back, drifting away. Leonard watched the old man leave inside. This is not because of family affection. To be honest, Loon Duo is not a good grandfather at all. He just sighs for an old man whose hopes have been shattered. Bring some novel plants to him in the future, hoping to relieve his depression at such an advanced age. Leonard shook his head and glanced at the birdcage in his hand. The gray owl inside stares at Leonard. I don't seem to have named you yet. Leonard tilted his head to look at the owl in the cage, and the owl tilted its head to look at Leonard. It's so troublesome to come up with a name. Since you are gray, let's call you gray. Leonard gave the poor owl a random name, and then turned around and started writing. He still remembered that Hogwarts admission letter stated that he would reply. He had completely forgotten about it until he saw Gray. It is estimated that Ren Duo didn't remember it either. Leonard quickly wrote a letter, which stated that he had received the admission notice and would enroll as scheduled. To Hogwarts, understand, Hogwarts. Leonard wrapped the envelope and handed it to Gray, watching it fly out of the window with the letter in its mouth. No hesitation at all. The owl is really reliable. Leonard sighed. I don't know how these owls locate their destinations. Forget it, it's not important, let's change your mood and take a break next time. Just try the white fresh essence in the potion textbook. Leonard said, tidying up the table, making room for a densely grown white plant freshly placed on the table. This was bought by Leonard at the Ziggs pharmacy when he went out later, to test how much the enhanced plant would affect the final product of the potion. Chapter 11 After practicing the spell, Leonard tried to buy more special magical plants from Giggs, but was ruthlessly rejected. He probably regarded Leonard as a brat who wanted to spoil the new magical plant after ruining the biting kale. It's a pity that Leonard doesn't want to reveal his specialness, otherwise Gaulo will show him the lively biting kale. However, although he couldn't buy any magical plants like biting cabbage, Leonard spent two sickles to buy a fresh white fresh plant from Giggs. Because Baishan is not a magical plant, Harvesting it will not gain experience, so it cannot be upgraded. However, although Bai Xi'an is not a magical plant, it will become a very miraculous Bai Xi'an essence after being treated with potions, which can quickly repair exaggerated huge wounds. When watching the original work, Hermione Granger in the protagonist group used white fresh essence to treat Ron Weasley's separation accident when using the apparition spell. With this thing, even if you accidentally get injured while dealing with a wizard, you won't have no way to deal with it. In the book, Magic Potion and Potion, there is a method for making this basic potion. Leonard has read it and it is not difficult, and the materials are easy to buy. The main material is the white fresh extract, and the auxiliary material is only a kind of wormwood. As long as the proportion is right, this kind of white fresh essence with excellent therapeutic effect can be made. However, before making the white fresh flavor, Leonard still needs to make a preparation, which is to strengthen the white fresh. Even if you don't choose the strengthening talents of the logistics department and the growth department, the most primitive optimized growth can give plants an optimized effect. Leonard put his hand on Baishan with ease, and with the surge of vitality, the branches and leaves of Baishan became more green, and pink flowers bloomed. You have used the talent skill, optimizing growth, increasing the maturity of the target and obtaining beneficial mutations. Baishan. Medicinal enrichment, concentrated juice. Concentrated juice. Leonard was puzzled when he saw the system prompt, and took off a leaf from the white fresh, noticing the viscous emerald green liquid flowing out from the broken part of the leaf. A fresh fragrance permeated the air, and I felt comfortable physically and mentally after taking a sip. I guess this quality can be directly used as white fresh essence. Leonard sighed. He picked a few more leaves, threw them into a mortar to grind them up, then added the extract, mixed well, and filtered. During this process, Leonard always felt like he was doing a chemical experiment. Soon, a small bottle of white fresh extract was prepared, and the next step was to simply boil the potion. Dot dot dot. Half an hour later, Leonard looked at the three small bottles of white fresh essence in his hand and sighed. 
After wasting all his efforts, he made three bottles of Bai Xi'an essence, packed them in crystal medicine bottles required by the school, and carried them with him. Although it looks very simple, it is very simple to do, but the success rate is frighteningly low. Simple here is simply the antonym of complex, not difficult. Brewing potions is not just about mixing the ingredients, the frequency and direction of stirring, and the timing of adding the ingredients are all very particular. If there is a slight mistake, the consequences of making a failed product will be considered minor, and in serious cases, it will even fry the pot. The white fresh essence is not that dangerous to make. At most, it will be scalded by the semi-finished concoction with strong healing effect, and it will recover on its own. Therefore, there are only three bottles produced, and the success depends on the high-quality white fresh extract. And the effect should be exaggerated. But not all these white fresh essences are used for healing. Early the next morning, Leonard asked Tom, the owner of the bar, to open the door to Diagon Alley and go to Slugger Gig's pharmacy. Arriving at the daunting entrance of the pharmacy, Leonard walked in without turning his eyes. Welcome, why is it you again? The boss Ziggs, who was arranging the shelves, looked up and said helplessly when he heard the doorbell ringing, I won't sell you magical plants, give up. I'm not here to buy magical plants, Leonard said. Oh, have you finally given up? Then are you going to buy potion ingredients or finished potions? As I said before, I won't sell love potions to underage wizards. Ziggs said seriously. I don't think I'm old enough to use a love potion, Leonard said seriously, looking at the unruly Giggs, I'm at an age where I can throw myself into a lady's arms openly. Giggs' face twitched, what you said made me seem to see a sloppy uncle. Are you talking about yourself? Scruffy uncle, Leonard replied, taking out a bottle of white essence from his pocket and putting it on the counter. Don't talk nonsense, I'm still young, I'm not an uncle. Giggs argued, his eyes subconsciously landed on the bottle of white fresh essence and slightly froze. Ziggs looked at the crystal bottle containing the emerald green liquid in surprise. A bottle of white essence. Where did you get it? Giggs picked up the crystal bottle and observed through the sunlight outside the window. Under the sun, the emerald green liquid medicine looks like a piece of emerald green, but the floating flocks in the medicine destroy its beauty. Well, the technique is a little rusty, the frequency of stirring is not enough, and the timing of adding the wormwood is a bit late, so the liquid is a bit cloudy. Zig said with some regret. I'm going to check how it works, per opinion. You can do whatever you want. Leonard nodded. Giggs turned around and took the tools, and quickly entered the working state. He opened the bottle stopper and dipped a little of the needle of the test medicine on his hands to watch the volatilization and penetration of the medicine. Almost all the potion penetrated into the skin, which made Ziggs look surprised. Amazing, he said. The quality is average but the treatment is surprisingly good. Leonard's expression was as usual, and there was no change in expression due to Giggs, praise. Giggs glanced at the calm Leonard and put down the crystal bottle. Okay, let me guess, you just bought that Baishian plant not long ago, so you brewed this bottle of Baishian essence. That's right, Leonard nodded, so do you want to sell it? Let me tell you in advance that although its therapeutic effect is unexpected, most people will look at its quality when buying potions. Your bottle is not in good condition, so the price will not too high, said Giggs, at most 10 sickles. This price can't be said to be bad. A normal bottle of white essence is about 1 galleon, which is 17 sickles. As a pharmacy, the price of buying potions must be lower than the retail price. However, the enhanced white fresh essence is used as the raw material, and the therapeutic effect of this bottle of white fresh essence is better than most of the white fresh essence on the market. This has nothing to do with the technology of brewing potions. With the formula fixed, the upper limit of the same potion is there. Leonard's enhanced white freshness is equivalent to breaking the ceiling of white freshness essence. Bai Xi'an's hind legs were not much different. Gig's statement is purely a businessman's statement, which is an act of lowering prices. But that didn't matter to Leonard, because he wasn't even going to ask for money. I don't want money. I want to exchange some magical plant seeds from you. Leonard said. The seeds of the magical plant. You haven't given up yet. Ziggs shook his head. I advise you not to waste time and money. You can't even grow mature biting cabbage, let alone start planting from seeds. Quote. I want to give it a try. People always need to learn. Leonard said. Okay, you convinced me, 
Giggs didn't insist. Of course, Leonard's bottle of white essence gave him a lot of points, so that Giggs no longer thought he was just a bear who didn't understand anything. Child. What magical plant seeds do you want? Ziggs asked. But don't get your hopes up too much. I rarely sell seeds, and most of the magical plants are forbidden to sell. You can only sell processed semi-finished products. Anything like biting kale will do, Leonard says. Then bite the kale, I hope you can grow them. Giggs turned and picked up a small cloth belt from the shelf and handed it to Leonard. There are more than a dozen seeds of biting cabbage in it. He said, another suggestion for you is to stir seven and a half circles before and after adding wormwood, and add absinthe. The value of a dozen or so bite kale seeds is no more than one galleon, which is a bit of a loss for Leonard, so Giggs gave away the tips for making white fresh essence for free. Thank you for your suggestion, I will pay attention to it. Leonard thanked him politely, and took the bag from Giggs. There is no prompt in the system, it seems that the seeds of magical plants will not be counted as experience points. But that's okay, when they grow up, even just a few minutes of survival can be counted as experience points. Leonard opened the cloth bag and saw a dozen miniature kale seeds inside with a smile on his face. With so many bite-biting kale seeds, plus white savory essence, this combat mission is absolutely no problem. Everything is ready, only the wand is missing. And on the tenth morning when Leonard came to Diagon Alley, he received a letter from Ollivander. It was just dawn, and Leonard, who hadn't gotten up yet, was awakened by a burst of knocking on glass. An old owl stood at the window, beaking on the window. Leonard yawned, comforted Gray who was excited when he saw the same kind, and opened the envelope. The content of the letter was very simple, his wand was ready. Ten minutes later, Ollivander's wand shop. This is my wand. Leonard looked at the wand in his hand and couldn't help stroking the knuckles on the wand. The whole wand is grayish white, with circular knuckles every ten centimeters. Other woods were used for the grip but Ollivander broke the skin to reveal the threaded elderberry. This would give Leonard better access to the elderberry. As soon as he got the wand this time, Leonard had a transparent feeling. The wand in his hand seemed to be an extension of his body, and no sudden emotions came out. It was a different feeling, and it seemed like this wand really suited him. He was a little excited. Although the wand in front of him was not the legendary elder wand, it could be regarded as a high imitation. It was made by the master wand maker Garrick Ollivander himself. This is a real out of print souvenir, Leonard seems to see the golden symbol from it. Looking at the shape of the wand, as Ollivander said, the wand with the added handle reaches 15 inches and is close to 40 centimeters. Although it is not difficult to carry, it is indeed a bit strange to wave. But this wand is precious anyway, as can be seen from Ollivander's sleep deprived face. Don't be too happy. Ollivander yawned, unable to hide his fatigue. Our preconceived idea is only theoretical. Whether this wand has the effect I think has yet to be tested. How to test? Leonard asked. Try to see if it can be used as a normal wand. Ollivander picked up his wand and waved it. The shelves in the store were separated, and a dummy with a target on his body jumped out of it. Come and try. Ollivander gestured. Leonard held the wand with a blank expression on his face. How to try? Use a spell, but I won't. There was silence in the wand shop, and Ollivander patted his forehead annoyedly, I forgot, you haven't learned magic yet, and you haven't tried a wand yet, but the basic spells are not difficult. You should have read the standard spells, right? There are basic spells on it. Introduction to the mantra. Leonard nodded. That's fine, just use that test. Ollivander heaved a sigh of relief, feel the magic power in your body, bring out your dissatisfaction, and wave your wand vigorously. Is that so? Leonard tried to swing it, and suddenly he felt that the wand became heavy, and then a crimson light spot hit the center of the dummy target with a long trail. With a muffled sound, the dummy was repelled and hit the wall, the position of the bull's eye was faintly dented. Not bad, it looks quite powerful, but I don't know how it compares to the elder wand. Ollivander stepped forward and touched the depression in the bull's eye, very satisfied with the performance of the wand. Leonard was also very satisfied. According to the magic power in his body, using Common's magic wand would probably only repel the dummy a little, leaving no trace at all, but with the blessing of this magic wand, it can be increased to this extent. I feel good already, Leonard said. No, no, this is just a basic spell. 
The magic of the Elder Wand lies in its ability to increase the effect of the spell. Ollivander shook his head. It needs to be manifested after you learn magic. His reaction made Leonard puzzled and asked, You seem to be familiar with the Elder Wand. My family has records that it is the most outstanding wand. It is said that the repairing spell released by it can repair the wand. Ollivander said longingly, Wands are too difficult to repair. Every time I maintain a wand, I want to beat those guys who don't take care of their wands. The suddenly irritable Ollivander made Leonard sweat a little. You want to see if this wand has the enhanced charms of the Elder Wand? Leonard asked. Ollivander nodded, yes, simply increasing the damage of magic is not a big deal, the key is the effect. Then I, Leonard was just about to say that he would practice magic more, when the bell on the door of the store rang, and a customer pushed in. Come here for now, tomorrow you can come to me to learn some spells. Ollivander glanced at the father and daughter who walked into the store, I have a guest, probably your classmate. Then I'll go back first, Leonard said looking at the father and daughter who were looking at the layout of the store. Hello, let's buy a wand. Maybe seeing that the two people in the store ignored him, the father looked a little unhappy and reminded. Oh, I'm very sorry, I'll come right away. Ollivander smiled at the other party embarrassedly, and walked over. Seeing that Ollivander was busy, Leonard was about to leave and passed by the father and daughter. The girl looked curiously at the wand in Leonard's hand. The style of that wand was very special, and it was very different from the wands of Hogwarts professors and wizards in the leaky cauldron she had seen. Do you want to buy a wand? What's your name, kid? Ollivander's voice came from behind, and Leonard was leaving when he heard the girl say his name. My name is Hermione Granger. Hermione Granger is the intelligence of the protagonist group responsible. Leonard recalled the appearance of the girl just now. She was a little freckled, her front teeth protruded, her hair was too thick and she looked a bit messy. It should look good with a little care. But the protagonist group. Trouble, it's better not to touch it. Leonard put on the hood, hiding his face in the shadows. He planned to go to Nocturne Alley to have a look, and it would be best if he could find a suitable place for an ambush. The task asked him to conduct a plant versus wizard, and he didn't say that he couldn't set traps. As a scavenger in the previous life, the most things he did were traps and sneak attacks, which could reduce traces, increase the success rate, and reduce the possibility of being in danger. If all goes well, he may even be able to complete this mission without taking any risks. Turnover Alley is actually part of Diagon Alley, and there are at least three alleys that lead directly from Diagon Alley to Nocturne Alley. Normally, these alleys have very obvious signs to prevent innocent people from straying into them. However, it is not. Leonard pouted as he stood by a wall with a gray street sign. He almost missed the sign just now. This sign is like a dividing line, on one side is the bustling Diagon Alley, and on the other side is the deserted Fandau Alley. Looking at the past at a glance, the sparsely populated side of the alley is in stark contrast to Diagon Alley. The only few shops are dusty and look like they are about to close down. Leonard put on a hood and walked slowly on the street of Turning Alley. This place is not far from Diagon Alley. Although some people looked at Leonard wantonly on the road, they were still restrained. However, in some more remote alleys, those eyes that were not concealing their malice were like sticky tentacles circling around Leonard. These gazes made Leonard feel a little disgusted, and it also made him hesitate a bit about this kind of behavior of walking into the alley openly. Leonard stood in front of a remote path, remembering the surrounding terrain and environment. It's not bad here, the terrain is narrow and only one person can pass through, and the two sides are connected, which is convenient for him to escape. Although it is easy to be outflanked by two sides, as long as the battle is resolved quickly, there will be no chance for people to be outflanked. Leonard was thinking about the layout of the trap, but saw a man with a burn scar on his face walking up the path, he looked at Leonard with a sneer on his face. Hello, kid. Bad intentions. Leonard's face remained calm one hand pinched the restless biting tail under the robe, while slowly backing away. Where do you want to go, kid? Another long-faced man with scars suddenly appeared behind Leonard, and he stretched out his hand with a wicked smile and was about to grab Leonard. It seems that the completion of the task is ahead of schedule. There was a helpless expression on Leonard's face, he was not a real child, his first reaction when encountering such a thing was not to be afraid, but to fight back. 
Although the incident happened suddenly and there was one more enemy than expected, Leonard guessed that he might be in danger before he came to the alley, so he brought all the life-saving things with him. In addition to the ripe and movable biting kale, he also brought ten biting kale seeds. These two people just regarded him as a common kid who was curious and broke into the alley, and had no idea that Leonard had dangerous plants in his hands that could threaten them. Biting cabbage can kill a person if it bites into the neck. Just when Leonard was about to throw the mature biting kale in the face of the man behind him, a shadow covered the two of them, and a big hand grabbed the sinful arm that the man stretched out to Leonard. It's really promising, actually bullying a child. A vicious voice said. Leonard looked up and saw a woman who was at least two meters tall. She is at least two meters tall, but her fit body makes her figure extraordinarily well proportioned. Her facial features are regular, and her eyes are long and narrow like a female leopard patrolling her territory. She is beautiful and dangerous. Midgard, the wizard who was grabbed by the arm let out a scream, which soon turned into a scream. The strong man called Midgard pinched the wizard's arm and lifted him up, threw him over Leonard's head, and hit the wizard blocking Leonard in front of him. Go away, Midgard said coldly. The two wizards got up and fled, and then Midgard's eyes fell on Leonard. Child, Midgard said fiercely, get out, this is not the place for you. Although her expression was fierce, it was just to scare the child, otherwise he wouldn't have had to take action or even drive Leonard away. Thank you very much for your rescue, ma'am. Leonard thanked him sincerely. Although he had the confidence to deal with those two wizards, but the other party was kind enough to help him out of the siege after all, so he had to know what was good or bad. Besides, Leonard wasn't sure what the consequences of his hasty encounter with those wizards would be. This kind of wizard who dares to block the way must know some evil black magic and even the unforgivable curse, and the consequences of being accidentally hit will be very serious. Midgard looked suspiciously at Leonard's leaving figure, feeling that something was wrong with this little brat. He was too calm, not at all like a child who strayed into the alley or an ignorant teenager who wanted to pursue exciting adventures. HMPH, no matter what gives you confidence, don't come here again, this is not a playground. Midgard muttered, turned and left. She obviously didn't know that not only did the child not give up the idea of going to the alley again, but he even planned to plan an attack on the alley. Leonard, who left Turnover Alley and returned to the bustling Diagon Alley, had finalized his plan. Just tonight, complete the novice mission released by the system. At night, the walls of the leaky cauldron opened to Diagon Alley. Leonard, wearing a black robe, came out quietly, walked along the streets of Diagon Alley, and turned at a fork in the alley. Turning to Lane at night is even more gloomy, but it is definitely not quiet here. Strange rustling noises from the corner of the wall, as well as shouting and cursing from the conflict not far away reached Leonard's ears. Suddenly there was an explosion, and a mushroom cloud of flames appeared in the sky. Turning to the alley at night seemed to be more lively than during the day, Leonard frowned slightly, and came to the remote path that had been surveyed in advance. There seemed to be some blood on the ground, I don't know where it came from. Leonard didn't pay attention took out the cloth bag containing the seeds of biting cabbage, took out three seeds and sprinkled them in the soil between the bricks. The seeds took root on the ground, swelled and became bigger in the blink of an eye, and reached the maturity stage, turning into three ferocious cabbages with sharp teeth. Immediately afterwards, Leonard launched the reinforcement, and chose the direction of reinforcement with a clear purpose. The three biting cabbages swelled again, and the big mouths full of sharp teeth opened to the point of tearing apart, like traps ready to go. Then their bodies became transparent, and they just disappeared on the ground. Biting cabbage is strengthened in another direction, the biting cabbage mine that can turn into a trap. It's a bit like potato mines, but it's a pity that this kind of enhancement doesn't give you experience. Is it because it's instant? Leonard touched the ground and touched the slightly wriggling biting cabbage. The perfect trap. A malicious smile appeared on Leonard's face. Then it was up to him, the bait, to act. Although fishing law enforcement is a bit crazy, as long as Leonard has no conscience, there will be no conscience. He took off his hood and walked out of the path, imagining himself as a lost innocent child, pretending to be ignorant. And that often means great prey and turn to Lane. Soon, an old woman opened the door and walked out as if smelling a bloody shark. Her face was wrinkled and she was wearing a gray robe. 
she looked at Leonard greedily, as if seeing a bag of golden galleons. An old woman who fits the image of an old hag very well. How much is an underage wizard worth? Leonard didn't know and didn't really want to know, maybe it wasn't worth much, but the other party liked this kind of young and good-looking young people. But this like should be full of malice. Little friend, are you lost and why are you here alone? The old witch said with a smile, with a self-confident and kind smile on her face. Leonard took a step back and played out a timid kid who saw a suspicious weirdo. Don't be afraid of the child, come to mother-in-law, mother-in-law has candy here. She reached under the cloak as if looking for something. Seeing this scene, Leonard ran to the path behind him. Don't doubt, the human traffickers in the wizarding world definitely don't rely on food supplements, or the method of shooting flowers, a petrification spell or a stun spell can quickly pack away the target. He wouldn't just stand there in a daze and watch the other party take out his wand and hit him for a while. Seeing Leonard running away without hesitation, the old witch showed a resentful and annoyed expression on her face. Don't run, stop, she lowered her voice and roared to catch up. The reason why she lowered her voice was not because she was worried about being found out for doing bad things, but because she was worried about being seen by her neighbors and asking for a share. This was her first prey. Leonard didn't run fast, and it looked like he could catch up easily, so she didn't use magic. Casting magic while running was not easy to hit and would delay her speed. So she simply put away her wand and quickened her pace. Seeing Leonard running into the alley, the old witch showed an excited expression on her face. If the child ran directly to Diagon Alley, she would be a little afraid, but now the little kid went to a more remote alley by himself it's no wonder she's gone. She rushed into the path and saw Leonard standing there panting as if he had been taken aback. He he he, why don't you run away? The old witch drew out her wand and laughed like a night owl. Leonard stepped back step by step, and the old witch approached step by step. Seeing that the old witch was about to step into the trap, a sudden explosion caught her attention and made her subconsciously look behind her. Leonard was also taken aback. His position happened to be able to see the direction of the explosion. There was a fire rising there, and he didn't know what happened. But seeing the distraction of the old witch, he immediately realized that the opportunity had come, and immediately took out the biting cabbage with its mouth open from under the cloak and threw it out. Because the biting cabbage has only the most basic intelligence, it cannot arrange a position in advance and wait for the person to take the bait before taking the initiative to attack. It will only follow instinct, and the early attack will lead to the failure of the sneak attack. So Leonard chose to use it as a throwing weapon, throwing it while the opponent was not paying attention. Originally, he planned to throw it out when the other party stepped on the biting kale mine, but the sudden explosion distracted the old witch in front of her. Of course Leonard would not let go of such a good opportunity. Although the explosion caught the old woman's attention, it was only for a moment. Every day in the alley is full of chaos. Although explosions are rare, they occasionally happen when some wizards in the alley merge. So she immediately turned her attention back, and immediately noticed the approaching sound of breaking through the air. She turned her head and saw the biting cabbage with its mouth wide open revealing a mouthful of ferocious fangs. She was shocked, and subconsciously raised her wand. Biting Kale bit his wand violently, and his ferocious teeth were rubbing against the wand, threatening to bite it off. But the treated wand is much tougher than the common branch, and the cabbage that can bite people for a while can't bite the wand. The old witch, startled by the attack, was already planning to cast a spell. Flame, she hurriedly chanted the mantra, and suddenly heard the calm voice of a child not far away. Fluorescent flickering, the dark alley was instantly filled with dazzling white light, and the old woman who was staring at the biting cabbage was immediately hit. She seemed to be looking directly at the sun. The sting and tears made her unable to open her eyes. Halfway through the magic spell the curse was also replaced by screams. The release of magic failed, but the biting cabbage with the light behind it was not affected. Its wand, which had been sharpened for a long time, finally broke, and then it jumped up again and hit the old witch's forehead, causing her to lose her balance and fall to the ground. PFF, the sharp teeth pierced the skin and flesh, making a sound like air leaking. The old witch's body trembled, her legs paddled on the ground, she struggled to throw away her wand, and grabbed the biting cabbage that had bitten her throat, struggling desperately. But the biting cabbage seemed to grow on her throat, no matter how she tore it, 
she couldn't tear it off, and could only tear the wound on her neck bigger and bigger. In the end, the old witch's body froze, and her hands slipped down without a sound. The mission is completed, you have gained 100 experience points and 3 enhancement points. Your level has increased, and you are currently an intermediate plant apprentice 61 500s. You have obtained 1 enhancement point. Your talent has an additional effect, the tenacity of plants. Plant toughness. Regardless of terrain restrictions, your strengthened plants can grow on any solid ground. Hearing the system's prompt, Leonard realized that the battle was over with a double image in front of his eyes. Knox. He turned off the fluorescent spell, rubbed his eyes and was speechless. He didn't expect the effect of his magic wand to strengthen the spell to be so straightforward. He originally planned to let the sudden light temporarily make the old witch blind, but he didn't expect the fluorescent spell to become a flash bomb, and the whole alley all are illuminated. How can this be called fluorescent flashes? This is clearly the flames of the sun, if he hadn't closed his eyes, he would have been half blind for a while. Not to mention how the old witch felt before she died, even Leonard who didn't look directly at the light almost thought he was blind. It seems that I have to get used to this wand as soon as possible, preferably to the point where I can actively control the intensity of magic. Leonard rubbed his eyes and said helplessly. He went to the old witch's body, first wiped the blood off the biting cabbage with the old witch's clothes, and then put it away. Then he began to harvest the spoils, as a scavenger in his previous life, he often did this. Unless the things on the bounty target are important evidence or stolen goods, everything else belongs to the scavenger. Two galleons, ten sickles, a wand and two keys strung together, that's all the old witch had. It's so poor. Leonard curled his lips, glanced at the corpse on the ground and then at the biting kale mine still lying in ambush not far away. After thinking about it, he didn't sort them out, but dragged the corpse with difficulty go out of the alley. There was silence outside the alley, and if it wasn't for the smoke not far away, Leonard would have thought that the explosion just now was an illusion. The explosion happened and no one came out to check the situation. It's so indifferent, Leonard complained. He felt something was wrong, and his heart was furious. This feeling urged him to speed up and drag the corpse to the door of the old witch's house, took out the key, tried to open the door, and then dragged the corpse into the house. After closing the door, Leonard sat slumped on the ground, panting heavily. He was really tired. Although the old hag had no flesh, she was still an adult, and it was still very difficult to drag it. The main reason is that my physical fitness is not good. From tomorrow, no, I will start exercising from today. A wizard also needs a strong body, so that the body can be more dexterous to avoid other people's curses in time. Sitting on the ground and panting for a while, recovering a little strength, Leonard stood up and looked around. It is not an exaggeration to say that this old woman's house is completely bare. There is only a table, a bed, and a wardrobe in disrepair. I don't know if this old witch has a hobby of hiding things. Leonard skillfully put on the dragon leather gloves that he had prepared long ago, and planned to perform a righteous act of bravery, to rummage through the cabinet of the NPC's house. As for why she wore gloves, the lack of fingerprints was secondary, mainly because she was worried that the old hag would leave some vicious spell on her inheritance to surprise the guy who killed her. Even Leon Cheng Ju in the low martial arts world knew to put poison on the treasure, Voldemort also cursed on the Horcrux ring and indirectly killed Dumbledore, Leonard could not be too careful. Finally, after a while of rummaging through boxes and cabinets, Leonard found a dark compartment under a floor in the corner, in which lay a dark suitcase. After opening the suitcase with another key, Leonard was surprised to find that it was actually a suitcase that had been cast with the No Trace Extending Charm. The Traceless Extension spell is a very magical magic that can expand a nearly infinite space within a limited range of containers. The author of, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Newt's Commander has in his hand a suitcase with a Traceless Extension spell. His suitcase is like a zoo, not only has a well-equipped potion room, but also has divided into different environments, a huge space for different magical animals. Of course, it is not so easy to make a Traceless Extension spell of that level. It is light to describe it as expensive, and it should be unique if you have to say it. That was probably done by Dumbledore with the help of the Elder Wand, and if Leonard learned the untraceable extending charm in the future, he could also try to make one. The suitcase in front of him is not as high-end as Newt's commanders. 
The space inside is quite limited, and it can only be used as a secret room for storing precious items. A kerosene lamp illuminates the small area, and there are many materials on the shelves on three sides. It's a pity that at a glance, these materials are all processed semi-finished products, and there are no fresh magical plants. However, there are a lot of magical animal materials here, but Leonard doesn't know much about them, so he may have to look through the textbooks. Really good harvest tonight. Satisfied, Leonard walked out of the suitcase, carrying it in his hands and heading back to the leaky cauldron. As for the old hag's body, Dot let her rot here. Leonard threw the key on the old witch, pushed open the door, saw the empty street outside the door, and was about to leave, suddenly his heart skipped a beat. The professionalism from the scavenger suddenly reminded him of something. That is, the habits of each place often represent the survival rules of a place. It is impossible for the people living here not to hear the explosion that just happened, but they chose not to go out very tacitly. It's definitely not because they are all law-abiding and good citizens, but they are turning to the alley. In the event of such a large-scale commotion, the danger level on the street will soar. Otherwise, at this time, the first reaction of most residents living in Fandau Lane should be to go to the explosion site to reap benefits, instead of staying at home obediently. Thinking of this, Leonard suddenly felt that there were monsters wandering in the dark street, and turned around without hesitation to close the door. At this moment, stumbling footsteps approached quickly, and before Leonard could react, a hand slammed the door shut. That hand pushed open the door, and a figure smelling of blood and burnt rushed in at an unimaginable speed, and closed the door smoothly. Leonard subconsciously picked up the wand, and was about to blast away the person in front of him with a basic spell, but was grabbed by the hand holding the wand. Shut up, a hoarse voice sounded, slightly familiar. I'll stay here for a while and leave. If someone finds out that it's not just me, you will die too. Leonard, who was caught in the right hand, was about to throw the biting kale, but the discriminating voice stopped him. Following the moonlight outside the window, Leonard could clearly see the face of the person coming. Isn't this the woman who rescued him during the day? It was at this time that she looked a little embarrassed, with the wound torn open by an unknown sharp weapon and the burnt smell of the flames. A normal person would have died long ago with such a serious injury, let alone be alive and kicking. And the woman in front of him obviously recognized Leonard. It's you. Midgard saw Leonard's face frowning slightly, and soon she noticed the corpse lying on the ground. The bite marks on the corpse's neck made her raise her eyebrows. I thought you were a harmless lamb, but I didn't expect you to be a wolf cub with teeth. Midgard said lightly. What the hell kind of adjectives are these? Leonard curled his lips and gestured to his hand, can you let me go? Midgard hesitated for a moment, glanced at the corpse on the ground, and decided to let go. It wasn't because she thought Leonard was harmless, but because the laceration wound on the neck of the corpse on the ground didn't look like it was caused by a magic wand. Even if she restricted Leonard's hand holding the wand, it would be of no use, and it might cause violent behavior. Leonard gritted his teeth and rubbed his wrist, just holding it for a while, a red mark appeared on his wrist, and it is estimated that it will swell up soon. This person is really serious in his actions. Leonard complained in his heart, looked at Midgard, who was covered with wounds all over his body, and asked, are you being hunted down? Isn't it obvious enough? Midgard asked rhetorically. But you're covered in wounds, won't the blood be traced? Leonard asked, taking responsibility for his own life. You don't have to worry about this. Whether it's tracking or anti-tracking, I have enough experience. Midgard said indifferently. The explosion just now was because of you. Don't you think you talk too much? Midgard squinted at Leonard. Hey, you entrusted me with my protection. This room does not belong to you. Midgard glanced at the corpse on the ground, meaning that you are not a good person either. From the moment he saw the corpse, Midgard didn't treat Leonard like a child, and naturally he didn't speak politely. You, the guilty Leonard muttered, and suddenly saw the ferocious face of the woman in front of him, the pupils of both eyes shrank into a line. Hey, what are you doing? Leonard was taken aback and took two steps back. This woman's body was frighteningly strong, even if the cabbage-biting people could kill her in this small room, she would probably be killed. A bit dangerous. He's coming. Midgard glanced at Leonard and said in a low voice. Him. Who? Leonard looked blank. Why is there such a sense of immorality in this atmosphere? He is only 11 years old, do you want to be so exciting? 
Grayberg, Fenrir Grayberg, Midgard said word by word. Fenrir Greiberg, Leonard remembered the name as soon as he heard it. Isn't this the leader of the werewolf wizard? Werewolf wizards, aliens in the wizarding community, are rejected and discriminated against by normal wizards because of their instability and danger. Whenever the moon is full, the werewolf wizard will turn into a werewolf and attack the surrounding humans indiscriminately, especially the wizard. Their teeth and claws bear a werewolf curse, turning anyone they hurt into a werewolf. Harry Potter's third-year professor, Lupin Remus John, was a werewolf, a poor man who was forced to become a werewolf because of a werewolf infection. And it was Fenrir Gryberg who turned him into a werewolf. As the leader of the werewolves chasing you, Leonard was a little surprised, but thinking of the size and strength of the woman in front of him, are you a werewolf too? What, you know you're afraid? A sneer appeared on Midgard's face. At your age, you dare to kill people, but are you still afraid of werewolves? It's self-defense when I kill people. Who told this guy to have bad intentions? Leonard defended, and I'm not afraid, I'm just worried that he can smell your scent, will the werewolf's sense of smell be very sensitive? Quote, the werewolf's sense of smell was only slightly stronger before transforming, and I paid attention to cleaning up the smell on my body, Midgard said. Leonard walked to the window, and Moonlight looked out of the house. Then he saw Fenrir Greyberg. There were three people outside the house, and Fenrir Greyberg stood out. It was a tall and strong man with lush hair, and his muscles seemed to squeeze out of his clothes. His eyes were pale gold under the moonlight, his arms were extraordinarily thick, and his sharp nails were pale black, making him look extremely fierce. This is the leader of the werewolf, and it looks really dangerous. Don't stare at him, he is very sensitive to sight. Midgard reminded. After hearing this, Leonard obediently withdrew his gaze, and then looked at the wound on Midgard's body. The current Midgard smells quite fragrant, with a kind of mature beauty. However, the wound on her body is healing quickly, and I have to say that the constitution of the werewolf is really strong. Your injury, Leonard looked at the cuts and burns on Midgard's body and was taken aback suddenly. Did you remember to remove the smell of barbecue from your body? What is the smell of barbecue? Midgard was also taken aback, looking at the wound on his body, his pupils shrank. The potion I use can only cover up the smell of blood and the normal smell. The smell of barbecue is not good. Dot not good. Child, hide behind me. Midgard hurriedly stood up and shouted loudly. Suddenly the wall exploded, and the flying masonry dust hit the two of them. Leonard reacted quickly, and immediately hid behind Midgard after realizing something was wrong, and the bricks hit Midgard without even shaking her body in the slightest. She bared her teeth, like a she-wolf, with a deterrent growl from her throat, her eyes fixed on the strong figure in the smoke. Midgard, my dear sister, you won't be able to run away now. The sturdy figure stepped into the room slowly, glanced at the corpse on the ground, the hideous wound on the throat made his face reveal excited smile. Oh, Midgard, it's not like you to kill someone to hide in someone's house. Fenrir smiled and showed his fangs, if you had done this earlier, then I wouldn't have to do such hurtful things. A werewolf should look like a werewolf, but what do you keep a child for? You plan to turn him into a wolf. Are you a werewolf? Midgard didn't speak. She stared at Fenrir, and out of the corner of her eye she looked at the other two werewolf wizards holding wands. There were three people in total, and one of them was Fenrir, who was no match for her at all. She was trapped in this narrow room again, and it seemed that she would not be able to escape this time. Hey, kid, I'll hold the three of them back later you can find a way to escape by yourself. Midgard whispered without looking back, it's up to you whether you can run away, you'd better use your ability to kill that old woman, or you will just die here. You can't beat him, Leonard asked, he is my big brother, a demon who indulged his heart and turned himself into a werewolf, which made his magic and physical strength much stronger than mine, plus there are two other werewolf wizards. Midgard didn't go on, but the meaning was obvious. I have an idea. Leonard threw the suitcase in his hand aside, he can't care about the suitcase at this time, he wants to lose weight, remember to close your eyes when I call you later, and after I agree, you should first the thing is to rush down the alley over there. What is your solution? That road leads to the depths of the alley, where it is more dangerous. Midgard said. Nonsense, you can't run very far like this, listen to me. Leonard said unceremoniously. Midgard raised his eyebrows, 
glanced at Fenrir who was approaching, and whispered, Listen to you, but don't blame me if you die. The old woman's body was still lying there on the ground. As a wizard who lived in the alley, he was killed by a young wizard. Midgard felt that this child was really unusual. Maybe his method really works. Don't talk nonsense, remember to take me with you. Leonard jumped on Midgard's back and threw the biting cabbage at Fenrir. Probably due to the nature of canines, both Fenrir and the two werewolf wizards behind him were subconsciously staring at the biting kale in the air, even Midgard. It's now, Leonard yelled. Midgard froze for a moment, quickly closed her eyes, and then she heard Leonard's voice in her ear. Fluorescent flickering, fluorescent flicker. Midgard, who closed his eyes, froze for a moment. Before his brain could react, he felt an orange spot suddenly light up in the pitch black field of vision. That feeling is like the feeling of closing your eyes and feeling the direct sunlight in the midsummer sun. What the hell is fluorescent flashing? Before he had time to think about what was going on, Midgard immediately understood what Leonard was thinking. He caught the attention of Fenrir and the other two werewolf wizards with the objects he threw, and then blinded the opponent's dog with fluorescent flashes. I, This time is the best chance to escape. But she didn't run away in a hurry. If Fenrir happened to be lucky enough not to be caught in the eyes by the light, then she rushed over at this time to deliver the goods. Right now, run. Leonard terminated the fluorescent spell, and whispered wearily in Midgard's ear. This time he took the initiative to increase the output of magic power, exaggerating the brightness of the already exaggerated fluorescent spell, which made him burst into tears, and the result of forcing his eyes open in the strong light was that his eyes seemed to be painted with pepper it was red and swollen like water and she kept crying. But he had to open his eyes, only in this way could he see whether the people on the opposite side had been blinded by the fluorescent spell. Leonard's luck was good, the three of them were caught off guard by the fluorescent charm, and their pupils were almost burned by the sudden bright light in the darkness. The three bent down and screamed in pain. At this moment, Midgard, who heard Leonard's order, opened his eyes and rushed towards the alley. Midgard felt a double image of the scene in front of her eyes. Although she closed her eyes, she was still affected by the strong light. But this is much better than Fenrir holding his head and screaming for pain. He was standing in the C position just now, and he was worse than the werewolf wizards on both sides. This made Midgard hesitate a bit. She felt that this was the best time to get rid of Fenrir, but she hesitated because this person was his big brother. But thinking of Chong Jin, who was brutally murdered by the rational werewolf wizards who followed her in her residence, it made her hands and feet cold again, and her anger rushed straight to her forehead. At this moment, Leonard felt the hesitation in Midgard's footsteps, grabbed her ear angrily and said, Don't dream, think about the survivability of a werewolf, you can't kill him with bare hands. Leonard's voice awakened Midgard's rationality. She glanced at Leonard who was pulling her ears viciously. Seeing his red and swollen eyelids, he froze for a moment, pursed his lips, and ran towards the alley. She speeded up and ran past Fenrir, and was about to break out of the encirclement. At this moment, Fenrir, who was holding his head, moved his ears. He heard the sound of the wind approaching and moving away, and understood that his sister wanted to take the opportunity to escape, so he stretched out his hard and sharp claws and slashed towards Midgard's back without hesitation. And lying on Midgard's back is Leonard. Leonard, with red and swollen eyes, immediately felt the attack from behind. At this time, he can only be thankful that tonight is not a full moon night. The claws and teeth of the werewolf wizard can only give people some wolf habits, and they will not really let them people become werewolves. As for the wound, as long as you don't cut Leonard in half all at once, it will be fine, and the white essence will solve the wound problem, but if the lower body falls on the ground, I am afraid that Midgard will not have a chance to retrieve him. Leonard's mind was full of chaotic thoughts, almost catching up with the Marquis. However, the pain didn't come, Leonard only felt dizzy, and when he realized it, he was already hanging upside down on Midgard's hand by his ankle. Well done. Leonard really wanted to yell awesome, but a pool of warm blood with the smell of blood spilled on his face, Leonard also heard a groan coming from Midgard. Midgard was wounded again. She rushed into the alley like a ferocious leopard, and put Leonard on the ground with an ugly face. I can't run away, she said coldly, the potion to hide my breath is used up, and the smell of blood on my body can't hide it at all. They will catch up. You hurry up, I will hold them back. No need. 
Leonard took out a white fresh essence from under the cloak, opened the cap and poured it on Midgard's back. The powerful medicine stopped the bleeding instantly, and catalyzed the accelerated healing of the granulation near the wound. Looking at the gradually healing wound, Leonard breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he was cautious enough to bring the white fresh essence, otherwise the person who saved him several times would really die here. And he will be killed by the way. Midgard, who originally planned to say a few last words, looked at Leonard in surprise when he felt the coolness on his back and the tingling from the wound healing. There are quite a lot of good things on you. White fresh essence with this effect sells for at least 15 galleons on the black market. What, so expensive? Leonard was stunned, even forgetting that there were chasing soldiers behind him. Giggs, that scammer, cheated him so much money. Sensing the change in Leonard's expression, Midgard asked curiously while waiting for the wound to heal completely, what's wrong with you? It's nothing, it's just that I was cheated by a profiteer. Leonard said weakly, I went to the pharmacy to sell white fresh essence, and he only gave me ten sickles. Originally, he thought Giggs was only making a little money, but he didn't expect him to make so much. He didn't lie to you. What I just said was the black market price, which is specially prepared for those dark wizards who can't appear in Diagon Alley openly. There is a lot of risk in buying or selling things there, and it is normal to be expensive. Quote. Midgard stood up, moved his body, nodded and continued, although your white fresh essence is effective, there are still some problems with the ratio and technique. After using it, the muscles are sore, and it can only be sold on the black market, high price. Why, Leonard couldn't help asking, because only dark wizards who have no other choice don't care about quality and only care about healing effects. Midgard said and picked up Leonard. Let's go, keep running, they won't be able to track them for long if there is no more bloody smell. Run, why do you want to run? Leonard said dissatisfiedly, of course I have to take revenge at this time. Revenge, Midgard looked at Leonard amusedly, your fluorescent spell is indeed amazing, but it can only be used to harass without preparation. Fenrir will definitely be prepared. You are very it's hard to trick him a second time. It's hard to say, unless he can conjure sunglasses on the spot. Leonard muttered. Sunglasses, what are those? Midgard asked curiously. Muggle gadgets, that's not important. Leonard said confidently, you don't have to worry about running away, even if they are guarding against my fluorescent spell chasing people, they still need to use their eyes to see them. You hug me, I'm facing theirs keep your eyes open to see how long they can chase. Midgard took a deep breath and was astonished, your thinking, is a bit damaging. As long as it's easy to use, and I set up a trap in the alley, there are only three of them, so it's hard to tell who will chase whom. Leonard said confidently. It seems that you are more prepared than I thought, Midgard squinted, looking at Leonard with a strange look. What kind of eyes do you have? Leonard asked a little uncomfortable being stared at. I'm just wondering what kind of family can make you such a freak. Midgard shook his head, do as you say, it feels like I've lived into a dog's stomach at my age. Then you come with me just to feel my trap. Leonard led the way, but there were already stumbling footsteps from outside the alley, and it seemed that Fenrir had already caught up. After walking a few steps, Leonard blocked Midgard and said, can you feel it? Ahead is the biting kale mine ambush. Midgard frowned and shook his head, I didn't find anything. That's good, it means that your big brother probably won't be able to find it. Leonard looked back at Fenrir who appeared at the entrance of the alley, jump over. Midgard knew Fenrir was coming without looking back, do this and your trap will be discovered. It's okay, jump. Leonard himself jumped over first, followed by Midgard. Then fell down and rolled forward, pretending to be seriously injured. Leonard urged from the side. Although she was a little curious about what Leonard wanted to do, but at this critical moment, she completed Leonard's instructions without any hesitation. Then she saw Leonard throw something quietly, and those round things fell on the ground and immediately took root and sprouted, turning into what looked like biting cabbages. The razor-sharp teeth were facing upwards, spreading flat on the ground, and finally disappeared in front of Midgard's eyes. Midgard, is this what she jumped over just now? It looked terrible. Also, this kid is too insidious, he deliberately jumped to show Fenrir just to let Fenrir know that there is a trap there and ignore the ground he rolled over. Is this guy a born hunter? At this time, Fenrir, 
who was standing at the entrance of the alley, also noticed Midgard's strange behavior. As a werewolf wizard leader known for his cruelty and cunning, he immediately thought of the trap set by Midgard. No wonder she didn't choose to flee along the main road to Diagon Alley, looking like this, she actually wanted to kill herself. It's a pity that when I was half blinded by the light stab, I subconsciously waved my paw, causing the already weak Midgard to be severely injured, and unexpectedly exposed the trap by myself under the slow movement. Hee <laughs> hee, how stupid, Midgard. Fenrir walked into the narrow alley alone, with a cruel smile on his face. Without your wand and with serious injuries, I'll see how you run now. Chapter 21 Seeing Fenrir approaching, Midgard pretended to be seriously injured and moved back step by step. Leonard beside him was also flustered, as if he was about to cry, dragging and trying to take Midgard away. It's a pity that the appearance of his small arms and legs can't drag Midgard who is two meters tall and full of tendons. Fenrir enjoyed the flustered expressions on the faces of the two of them very much. He approached step by step and showed a bright and cruel smile when he saw the expressions of hope in the eyes of the two who were getting more and more desperate. He raised his leg and was about to step into the first row of biting kale mines with his next foot, but his foot suddenly landed in the air. There is a trap, right? But unfortunately, I have seen through it long ago. Fenrir said mockingly, Next, I will tear you into pieces one by one, so that you can feel the pain of the mechanism. As he spoke, he stepped across the first row, and resolutely stepped his leg into the mouth of the biting kale mines in the second row. Biting kale is not polite to others. How can there be any reason to let something in your mouth go? The separated cabbage leaves closed instantly, and the strong bite force and sharp teeth instantly pierced Fenrir's calf muscles, and crushed the bones in his calf along the way. To be precise, it was like a sharp knife cut off Fenrir's calf in an instant. Before the pain came, Fenrir felt a bite under his feet, and his body involuntarily threw himself forward. But his other leg was still in front of the first row of biting cabbage mines, and this loss of balance made him sit on top of the first row of biting cabbage mines. The activated biting cabbage didn't care about anything, and immediately closed its sharp mouth, biting through Fenrir's lower abdomen from bottom to top. Hiss. Leonard gasped, as if feeling phantom pain. It hurts, it really hurts, the biting cabbage almost bit through Fenrir, if he wasn't big enough, he would have been sent away with one blow. It wasn't until this time that a terrifying scream of ghosts and gods resounded through the narrow alley, and the sound really made those who heard it cry and listen to sadness. Boss, the two werewolf wizards outside the alley felt their hairs stand on end when they heard Fenrir's horrible screams, and they hurriedly shouted but they didn't dare to go in for a long time. After all, such a strong boss has been planted, what can they do if they go in? This is the subordinate who gathers with violence and fear. Such a subordinate has 20 shots against the wind and 666 against the wind, which is basically useless. They don't care how their boss is suffering now, their first reaction is, even the boss is so miserable, I can't follow suit. At this time, the pained Fenrir stared at Midgard and Leonard with resentment, gnashing his fangs. You, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you now. He roared loudly, breaking the biting cabbage that was biting his crotch with one hand, tearing it to pieces, gushing blood, violent his eyes seemed to swallow Leonard and Midgard alive. However, Leonard looked calm, looked at Fenrir and said suddenly, stop him, he wants to run. Midgard suddenly stood up and punched Fenrir in the face. This punch Leonard even heard the sound of breaking through the air, and when it hit Fenrir's face, Leonard could see Fenrir's sunken skull and rippling face. The punch probably would have punched a hole in Leonard's body. But this is really a deadly move. It seems that Midgard has no small intention to kill his big brother. Fenrir's sturdy body flew into the air like a broken doll, and then hit the ground heavily, seemingly lifeless. Leonard breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this, and suppressed the discomfort he felt from biting the cabbage and biting Fenrir's lower body just now, and said, look, I just said that my method is okay. Midgard nodded with a complicated expression, carefully avoided the three rows of biting cabbage on the ground, and walked towards Fenrir. That's right, Leonard frantically put three rows of biting cabbage. Even if Fenrir stepped over the second row of biting cabbage, he would be bitten worse, and even the other leg would be bitten into pieces. Three cuts. However, before Midgard got close to Fenrir, the corpse-like Fenrir jumped up, bursting out at an astonishing speed, rolling and crawling towards the outside of the alley. 
Outside the alley, two werewolf wizards were stretching their heads to look around, when Fenner who rushed out suddenly hit them hard on the foreheads. Accompanied by the sound of splitting watermelons, the two werewolf wizards were instantly opened and fell heavily to the ground. Fenrir, who jumped out, did not stop at all, and fled towards the depths of the alley. This astonishing speed of escape stunned Leonard, and he watched him leave in a daze before remembering to look at Midgard, is it okay to let him go like this? It doesn't matter, he won't live long. Midgard sneered, he relies on violence and fear to restrain his subordinates, so that if he drags this body missing arms and legs back, his subordinates can eat him it's all wiped away. Then what if he went to his secret residence to heal his injuries? Leonard asked persistently. Midgard looked at Leonard strangely, your idea of not leaving any disaster is very suitable for surviving in turning alley. Tisk, I can't escape this thought no matter where I live, I don't want to see Fenrir come to me for revenge one day. Leonard curled his lips. Then don't worry, I'll help you deal with him. Midgard said in a deep voice, this is what I must do. Is it okay? Although his subordinates may turn against Fenrir, they will not watch you kill their boss. After all, Fenrir can die at any time, but the position of the boss needs enough prestige and protection. The former boss, or the enemy of the former boss, can effectively improve the reputation. Leonard looked at Midgard worriedly, there should be quite a few of them. Although you look very powerful, it's hard to deal with too many people. Who says I'm alone? There are many werewolf wizards who hate the nature of werewolves. Midgard smiled confidently. An encounter battle is over, and the next step is to clean up the battlefield. Midgard went to the alley to clean up the two hapless werewolf wizards, while Leonard cleaned up the trap he had set. In order to deal with Fenrir, Leonard threw almost all the biting cabbage seeds he carried, and all of them chose the strengthening direction of the biting cabbage mines, which made them lock the growth place, unable to move, and could only be dealt with on the spot. Otherwise, this road will bite off the legs of many innocent passers-by. The way to deal with them is very simple, which is to use optimized growth on them again, and also choose the strengthening direction of hypergrowth. The second overgrowth brought these biting cabbages that had reached maturity quickly to the end of their lives. Their teeth softened rapidly, and their bodies became like mud. In the end, only malnourished kale was left on the ground. Bright yellow seeds. Because of the two times of super speed growth, these seeds can be said to be congenitally defective, and even if they are planted, the biting cabbage that grows will be extremely weak. But Leonard didn't dislike it either. How can I say that these biting cabbage became like this because of Leonard's ability, no matter what kind of shape Leonard will not give up on them, at most he will not use them to fight. After packing up all the biting kale, Leonard walked out of the alley and saw that Midgard threw the two werewolf wizards into the old witch's house like trash. Seeing Leonard come out, Midgard pointed to the broken leaves on the ground and said, your biting kale was torn apart by Fenrir. Leonard scratched his head and said helplessly, it's a worthy death. Even with the cover of luminescence, the biting cabbage can't bite a werewolf. Midgard nodded, and didn't ask Leonard why his biting kale could be thrown out to bite people, nor how Leonard could plant two rows of biting kale in an instant. Everyone has their own secrets. If the other party is willing to reveal the secret to save himself, he should be grateful to the other party instead of asking the bottom line. She walked into the house with Leonard and returned the suitcase that Leonard had thrown away to Leonard. Leonard naturally accepted it. If you need any help in the future, you can find me in the alley. My name is Midgard Greyberg. If you ask anyone, you can find me. Midgard said. Ah, do me a favor there first, help me replace the materials inside with galleons or some rares magical plants or seeds, by the way, I want to live. Leonard's eyes lit up when he heard that, without hesitation pass the suitcase to Midgard. Midgard did not have the slightest accident, and this kind of business is very common. Sell them all, there should be a lot of hard-to-buy materials inside. It's easy to sell, but it's hard to buy them back. Midgard reminded. That's it. Leonard hesitated, he didn't know all the materials, and he didn't know what was in it. If he thought about it carefully, there might really be something in it that he needed. If you sell it at this time, you will be dumbfounded if you can't buy it when you want it later and seeing that he can light up the enhanced skill, swallow, he must need a lot of magical animal materials. Seeing Leonard's hesitation, Midgard smiled and said, leave the things to me for the time being. I'll give you galleons, 
If you need them in the future, you can buy them from me at the original price. That's good. Leonard was all smiles. Then thank you. I should thank you. If it wasn't for you, I would definitely die at Fenrir's hands today. Midgard shook her head, and suddenly she noticed her blood-stained and scratched clothes and frowned. Then she naturally stared at the clothes of the old witch on the ground. It can be regarded as helping each other. Leonard said a little embarrassedly, and was about to say a few words and leave when he saw Midgard take off his clothes calmly. Yu Yu, what are you doing? Leonard asked incoherently. Midgard's appearance is not bad, and his figure is even hotter. He is muscular but not bloated. He is well proportioned and full of wild beauty. The visual impact brought by the sudden undressing made Leonard not know where to put his eyes. Changing clothes, can't you tell? Midgard said while picking off the old witch's clothes. I know, but shouldn't you wait until I'm gone? Or avoid it, I'm still here. Leonard shouted. You're just a brat, what's there to avoid? Midgard said indifferently. I'm a man, come on, you're a brat with no hair yet. After changing his clothes, Midgard laughed when he saw Leonard's embarrassed expression, and hugged Leonard into his arms. Now you look like a child. At first I thought you were an old monster who used some kind of black magic to rejuvenate you. Wow. Okay, I'll let go. Midgard was overjoyed, and let go of Leonard, hurry up, it's still dangerous to turn over to the alley at night, I'll clean up all the remaining traces here. Leonard took a breath, recalled the soft touch just now, blushed but said firmly, don't forget, you still have to give me galleons. Don't worry, your garen is indispensable. Midgard waved his hand. I already know your name, and I will let the owl send you a package later. Leonard nodded, thinking that with Midgard's personality, he would not do anything that would be contradictory, so he left after saying goodbye. Midgard watched Leonard leave, shook his head and smiled, turned around and set the room on fire with the werewolf wizard's wand. The flames engulfed the house. Midgard looked at the alley with cold eyes, carried the box, wrapped himself in the robe, and left. Back at the leaky cauldron, this somewhat old bar and hotel actually gave Leonard a sense of peace of mind. At least here, he doesn't need to worry about someone abducting and selling him all the time. Back in his room, Leonard didn't rush to turn on the system and light up the enhancements, but lay down on the bed and started replaying today's battle. Although everything went well in today's battle, especially when Fenrir was slain at the end, just a trivial trick crippled the mighty Fenrir. But that was in the presence of Midgard, if only Leonard himself, even if Fenrir fell into the trap, he could easily strangle him to death. And this is when the opponent is Fenrir. Leonard, who is familiar with the plot, knows that Fenrir is a werewolf wizard who doesn't like to use magic wands. He believes in his claws and teeth more when facing enemies, so he will take the initiative to approach and step into the trap by himself. For other wizards, this method is very tasteless. Wizards must choose long-range attacks instead of running to step on traps. Moreover, the biting cabbage that was easily torn apart by Fenrir also reminded Leonard that it is easy to become passive when encountering different types of enemies with a single method. For example, if the biting cabbage meets a werewolf wizard, it will not be an opponent of the werewolf wizard even if it bites again. It would be nice to have a remote output plant. Of course, Leonard can also learn magic on his own. Judging by the performance of the wand in his hand, a disarming spell can probably knock people down. But the wizard's body is too weak, Leonard is a bit reluctant to use magic to compete with others. Especially when facing a dark wizard, if he not a big melon on the opposite side, he would really be ruthless and kill him directly. Magic still needs to be learned. Life-saving skills such as the illusion curse and the iron armor curse cannot be ignored, and then you need to find suitable magical plants as thugs. Leonard thought to himself. But where to get the plants for long-range attacks? I don't want to. Let's look at the enhancement first, maybe there is a solution to the system enhancement. Leonard turned on the system, intending to light up his long-awaited swallowing first. If you want to light up swallow, you must first light up one of the basic enhancements of offense and defense. A damage amplification and a basic resistance, both of which are not bad, and they are the basic prerequisites for lighting up the two lines, so Leonard lights up them all. The last remaining reinforcement point was naturally placed on swallow. Except for engulfment, the other two enhancements are passive, while engulfment needs to be used actively with materials. Due to the lack of venues and plants, 
Leonard has no way to try these enhanced effects now, so he can only lie on the bed and count sheep to sleep. He was a little insomnia, mainly because what he saw today was a bit too exciting, bloody and violent pornography came over and over again. Although this body has not yet developed, Leonard's soul is an adult, and this strange feeling makes it difficult for him to sleep. Go to bed early, I will learn magic from Mr. Ollivander tomorrow. Leonard rubbed his face, said firmly to himself, and lay down on the bed. Dash, early the next morning, Ollivander's wand shop. Wilhelm, did you not sleep well last night? Why is your face so bad? Ollivander was startled when he saw Leonard. Leonard yawned, waved his hands and said, I had a nightmare last night, but it's okay, let's start studying if we can. Are you really okay? Ollivander was skeptical of Leonard's, it's okay. I have a bottle of Vitality Tonic Potion here, you should drink it quickly. As he spoke, he took out a bottle of light yellow potion and handed it to Leonard. Ah, thank you, this is exactly what I need. Leonard finished the potion, forced himself not to think about the strange ingredients in it, and drank it all in one gulp, feeling a continuous burst of vitality in his body. I feel much better, Leonard sighed, how much is this bottle of potion, I'll give you the money. No need, after all, it's my job to ask you to test the wand. You're welcome, I'm not short of money. Ollivander waved his hand, let's start, did you use the wand to practice magic yesterday? Yes, Leonard nodded, how does it feel? It's a bit too exaggerated. I learned the fluorescent spell and almost blinded myself. Leonard told the truth, but concealed the occasion and reason for his release of magic. Oh, that's good news. It proves that this wand does have the effect of augmenting magic. Ollivander was very happy when he heard it. Let's use it first. Here, not too good. Leonard hesitated. It doesn't matter, I can still stand it if it's just light. Ollivander said indifferently, I want to really feel its amplification effect. Okay then, but I advise you to close your eyes. Leonard kindly reminded him, deliberately not facing Ollivander, but waving his wand sideways. Fluorescent flickering, dazzling light flows out of Ollivander's wand shop like a stream of water. Hiss, I didn't expect it to be so bright. Ollivander leaned against the shelf, rubbing his eyes. Leonard was already prepared, but he was a little dazed. I warned you, it's bright, Leonard reminded. Well, I was negligent. Ollivander rubbed his eyes, I hope my vision will not be damaged because of this, let's continue the experiment, and hope that this wand is not only effective for fluorescent spells. Ollivander opened the shelves again, revealing the target dummy. I'm not very good at teaching people magic, so I can only tell you the tricks of magic, and I can only correct you a little bit. Ollivander thought for a while, I plan to teach you four magics, disarming spell, illusion charms, iron armor charms, and restoration charms. Disarming charm is offensive magic, phantasm charm is auxiliary magic, armor charm is defensive and restoration charm is life magic. Through the effects of these spells, the strengthening effect of the wand can be judged. Leonard's eyes lit up, these four spells are quite suitable for Leonard, and they are all magics that are only taught in schools after the third grade, and there are no such spells in the elementary standard spells. The first is the disarming spell. This spell is a very common spell that does some damage, but its main function is to deprive the enemy of their weapons and subdue the enemy. Its spell is to disarm you. Ollivander waved his wand at the dummy. Watch my movements. He casts the magic, Expelliarmus. On the dummy, a red light hit the dummy, knocking the dummy back to the wall, and the wooden stick in the dummy's hand flew into the air, spinning and landed on Ollivander's hand. This is the disarming spell, try it. Ollivander said as he put the wand back into the dummy's hand. Leonard was dumbfounded, is this the end of the lesson? Otherwise, Ollivander asked suspiciously, didn't I teach you all the movements and spells? Try it. Leonard was skeptical, recalling Ollivander's movement, waving his wand and shouting, disarm. Nothing happened, and the scene was once very embarrassing. Your movements are fine, but there is something wrong with your spell and accent. The spells of modern magic are in Latin. You'd better correct your accent. Ollivander corrected, your incantation of the fluorescent spell is just very nice. Leonard twitched. I'm really sorry, but he didn't even learn English well. When he recited the spell, he relied on rote transliteration. Let's keep trying, Ollivander said. Leonard nodded, took a deep breath and continued practicing the disarming charm. 
disarm you. No, it's still an accent problem. The tone of your voice has changed out of tune. You need to pay attention to this. The function of the spell is to assist in guiding the magic power. Feeling the change will make it easier for you to learn silent spellcasting in the future. Disarm you. The intonation is accurate this time, but you forgot to coordinate with your wand. Each syllable corresponds to a change in the gesture of the wand. The wand is also an important tool for guiding magic power. Finding out the guiding function of the wand will help you learn how to use the magic wand, rod to cast spells. Disarm you. Yes, the wand and spells are very proficient, but you have put the card before the horse. The focus is on the magic power. You pay too much attention to the form of casting spells and forget to guide the magic power. Remember, it is the wizard himself who dominates the magic power, and the wand and spells are just auxiliary. Dot dot dot. A morning passed quietly. Leonard kept practicing swinging his stick and chanting mantras until his mouth was dry and his arms were sore. Ollivander is indeed not very good at teaching people, and his movements are somewhat deformed unconsciously because of his spellcasting habits. This is naturally no problem for him, but for beginners, that little mistake will lead to the failure of casting spells. But Ollivander was very patient and took the trouble to correct some of Leonard's small mistakes, and he was also recalling what the standard moves were like when learning magic. After failing to cast spells again and again, Leonard learned all his lessons, waved his wand and used the disarming charm again. Disarm you. With the waving of the wand, Leonard felt the magic power surge in his body, pouring out from the top of the wand, all in one go. A watermelon-sized red light roared towards the dummy holding the magic wand. With a bang, the dummy hit the wall heavily, causing the dust on the ceiling to fall straight down. At the bullseye position on the dummy's chest, a huge crack almost tore the dummy completely, and the fake wand in the dummy's hand flew upside down and inserted into the wall beside Leonard. Leonard, who was so happy because he successfully cast the spell, got stuck in his throat. The wand just passed Leonard and almost stabbed him in the arm. The speed of the wand was so fast that Leonard didn't have time to react. Ollivander also looked at the slowly repaired dummy and the fake wand stuck on the wall with lingering fear, and wiped the cold sweat from his brow. This is the wall he specially strengthened with magic, and it was pierced so easily. Good job. Ollivander's eyes were a little scared, but there was also unstoppable excitement. It has been confirmed that Leonard's wand can enhance offensive magic. There is no problem with his guess. Although Ollivander was looking forward to the experiment, he also saw that Leonard was tired, so instead of continuing to teach Leonard other magic, he asked him to go back and rest for a few days. But before returning to the leaky cauldron, Leonard dragged his tired body and sore hands to another trip to Slugger Zig's pharmacy. What, are you here to buy Vitality Tonic Potions? Ziggs, who was clearing the shelves in the pharmacy, asked jokingly when he saw Leonard with a tired face. No, I've already drank it, and it's not good to drink too much. Leonard shook his head, I'll buy some ingredients. Oh, what? Giggs asked. Wormwood, by the way, is there any hoclap juice? Leonard said. Yes, there are. Looking at you like this, you are planning to make a vitality tonic potion. Ziggs smiled. If it weren't for your young age, I would have thought you were doing something. Leonard rolled his eyes. Three servings, how much? Fifteen gnats a part of wormwood, and one sickle a part of hoclap juice, so... Well, a sickle equals 29 gnats, so 45 gnats equals. Giggs I took a quill and calculated on paper, but I couldn't figure it out after a long time. A total of 4 sickles and 16 gnats, Leonard rolled his eyes. Your calculation skills need to be improved. It's not my fault, it's all the currency system. Giggs shrugged. Just as you said, 4 sickles and 16 gnats. I suspect you don't know if I reported less. Leonard complained. It's just a matter of a few copper coins. Ziggs said indifferently, by the way, don't you need me to give you some guidance if you want to brew a vitality tonic potion? Why are you so kind? Leonard asked, glancing at Giggs. Tell me, is there something wrong? Tisk, you really don't have the clear and simple cuteness of a child your age at all. Giggs sighed. I guess you want to say that you don't have the clear and simple stupidity that this age should have. Leonard complained. Just talk about things if you have something to say. An old customer of mine asked me to order a few bottles of white fresh essence with good effect. I think your white fresh essence is very suitable for her requirements. 
To be honest, I am also very curious about how you manage to make such poor quality white fresh essence. The fragrance works so well. Giggs leaned on the counter and looked down at Leonard. Business secrets, no comment. Leonard replied indifferently, and then he glanced at Giggs, did you just say her? What, do you want to inquire about my guests? That's not okay, I'm very professional. Giggs said righteously. Are you afraid that I'll bypass you and do business with her directly? Leonard broke Giggs' lie. Okay, you're right, this is my way, how can I easily give it up to others, not even you, a brat? Leonard shook his finger, just say whether you want to do it or not, I'll count on you for a bottle two galleons, this is twice the market price. Double, Leonard raised his eyebrows, did your guest turn over to the alley? Hiss, you kid is getting more and more scary, how do you know that? Ziggs asked with a grin. I'm not a fool, Leonard said lightly. Giggs twitched the corners of his mouth. Does this mean that only fools can't see it? It's really a straightforward answer. This kid is too cool, right? You just say whether you can do this business or not. It's true that this old customer of mine did turn to the alley, but you, a kid, can't get involved in doing business there. There are many black wizards over there, and there are often people missing there, if you go there, be careful that the old witch will drag you away and sell you. Giggs threatened. Leonard thought he he, then I'm really sorry, the old witch probably couldn't drag him away, but he killed an old witch instead. Turning over to the alley is dangerous, right? He went in and killed a malicious old hag, and by the way disabled the leader of the werewolf wizard, Fenrir Greyberg. So Leonard looked at Giggs quietly, as if looking at a fool. Giggs felt uncomfortable being stared at, and said awkwardly, do you agree or not? I'll think about this business, Leonard said. Don't think about it for too long, the wizard who turned to the lane may change his mind at any time. Giggs reminded. I'll give you an answer the day after tomorrow at the latest. Leonard took out a handful of copper coins, counted 132, and threw them on the counter under Giggs' bewildered gaze. Wait, what do you mean by these copper coins, is there no chique? Ziggs asked quickly. Oh, I'm not worried that the next time a customer comes to buy something, you can count on it. It would be great to pay directly with Ned in the future. It's clear and easy to give change. I'm doing this for your own good. Leonard E. Jung verbally said. He wouldn't say that he disliked having too many copper coins on him. By the way, a little revenge for Ryan Giggs making a lot of money without him. Back at the leaky cauldron, Leonard ordered lunch at the counter and went back to his room, thinking quietly while waiting for lunch. The order from Fandau Lane, she, couldn't be Midgard. Leonard thought for a while and thought it was very possible. This kind of rush order will waste a lot of money, it is impossible to buy it for hoarding, and rushing to buy a large amount of white fresh essence means that many people will be injured. Fenrir's matter should be considered a major event in the current turnover lane, right? Did Midgard lead his little brother to kill Fenrir? Also subdued Fenrir's younger brother by the way. As a result, both sides were injured in the battle, so you need to rush an order to buy a good white fresh essence. Why didn't Midgard just ask me to buy it? Leonard thought for a while and realized that he didn't seem to tell Midgard that the white essence on his body was made by himself. Let's write a letter and talk about it. Leonard thought for a while, and wrote a letter before the lunch was delivered. The content of the letter was that Leonard heard that someone was buying white fresh essence with good effect, and asked Midgard is not what she needs. After writing the letter, Leonard took out a handful of nuts and fed them to Gray, and handed the letter to Gray after watching him finish eating. To Midgard Greiberg, the werewolf wizard in the alley. In order to prevent the letter from being sent by mistake, Leonard explained it in detail. Gray tilted his head, cooed, and flew out with the envelope in his mouth. It seems that I understand. Leonard once again lamented the reliability of the owl. After lunch, Leonard waited for his arms to recover and began to brew the white fresh essence. This time, under the guidance of Giggs, it strictly controlled the input time and stirring frequency of wormwood, and finally brewed a clear and transparent white fresh essence. Pour these white fresh essences into crystal bottles, and made a total of five white fresh essences. Then he cleaned the cauldron and began to try to brew a vitality tonic. This potion is much more difficult than white fresh essence, because it adds the material of the magical plant hoclap juice. To be precise, it is a magic mushroom. Hoclap juice is produced from a blue wriggling mushroom. 
it is difficult to say whether a mushroom is a magical animal or a magical plant. All in all a vitality tonic is a potion that really involves miraculous biological material, requiring much more time and effort. Half an hour later, it seems that experience in brewing potions is really important. The recipes in this potion book are less reliable than the recipes. There is no mention of the number of times of stirring and the time to put in the ingredients. Leonard looked at Black the Cauldron of Foam Side. He wasted a portion of hocklap juice and a portion of white fresh leaves. When mentioning experience, Leonard immediately thought of the potions textbook of the Half-Blood Prince. It was a sixth-grade potions textbook, Advanced Potion Making, that appeared in the sixth volume of Harry Potter. It was filled with Hogwarts Potions Professor, Severus Snape's insights on potions and some of his own creations, of magic. This book is a bit like the Nine Sons in the Sutra Pavilion of Shaolin Temple, it is extremely precious. If he could get that book, Leonard believed that his potion skills would also improve by leaps and bounds. But that book was not something that could be obtained in the early stage. According to Leonard's guess, it was left in the locker of the potions classroom after Snape became a professor of defense against the dark arts, took away. Wait six years to find that book. This is a bit outrageous. Or go to Snape to gain favorability and see if there is a chance to get it from him. Leonard imagined all kinds of possibilities until Gray flew in from the window and threw a letter in front of Leonard. This should be Midgard's reply. Leonard opened the envelope, and a letter full of crooked letters appeared in front of him. Ugly handwriting, poor grammar, it took Leonard ten minutes to read the letter. The letter was indeed sent by Midgard, and she did ask someone to buy the quintessence in Diagon Alley, because she felt the effect of the quintessence in Leonard's hand, and thought that there was a potion master selling defective products, so she I planned to buy some at a low price. The so-called low price refers to 10 galleons, which is cheaper than the white fresh essence found on the black market in Daoshang Alley, but it is also far higher than the normal market price in Diagon Alley. It turned out that Gig's purchase price was 2 galleons, which is too much money. Leonard was speechless. However, after seeing Leonard's letter saying that the white essence was brewed by Leonard himself, Midgard abandoned Ziggs without hesitation and invited Leonard to trade the white essence at night. She would arrange for someone to pick him up at the designated junction of Turning Lane and Diagon Alley in advance. Mr. Giggs, I'm really sorry. It seems that you will probably not be able to make such a huge profit. Your client is now mine. After reading the contents of the letter, Leonard put away the five sticks of white fresh essence with a smile. It feels good to do business without intermediaries. At night, Leonard quietly left the leaky cauldron again and went to the location designated by Midgard. After arriving at the location, Leonard did not rashly appear at the intersection, but stood in the shadow of the kerosene street lamp and observed the movement leading to the entrance of the alley. It wasn't that he was overly cautious, but that he wanted to prevent the possibility that Midgard would not kill Fenrir but be subdued by Fenrir instead. In that case, this letter asking Leonard to meet at the designated place may be a trap. Leonard would rather trouble himself than ruin his young life on a possibility. At the alley leading to Fandau Lane stood a taciturn middle-aged man. Is that one of Midgard's men? Leonard squinted his eyes and waited for a while, during which three people passed by the alley without attracting the middle-aged man's attention. Leonard still didn't move, he began to look around, observing all the possible ambush places, but his peripheral vision never left the middle-aged man, lest he didn't notice any sudden changes there. After checking around, Leonard didn't find anyone suspicious. Just when Leonard was about to use the disarming curse to knock down the man before approaching, Midgard walked out from the alley. I'm here too, then there should be no problem. Leonard finally felt relieved and walked out of the shadows. Seeing this, Midgard showed such an expression. I suspect that if I don't show up, you probably won't show up. Midgard smiled. I'm impressed by your caution. That's what I call taking responsibility for my own life, Leonard said. Oh, really? Then I'm curious, what are you going to do if I don't show up? Midgard asked curiously. I'm going to knock him out and ask who he is. Leonard glanced at the unsmiling middle-aged man and spread his hands. The middle-aged man glanced at Leonard, and his eyes changed slightly. You are really interesting. The corner of Midgard's mouth raised. Come on, go to my place and find out the way. If you have troubles and cannot send letters in the future, you can go directly to me and find me. Midgard led the way, 
and after the middle-aged man stopped, a group of three walked through the dark street and came to a courtyard. There were a lot of people lying in disorder in the yard, and everyone had wounds on their bodies. Coupled with the worn clothes, Leonard had the illusion that he had come to the beggar gang. Are these werewolves? Leonard asked looking at them. Of course, except for werewolf wizards, no matter how good the relationship is, other people will not choose to live with werewolf wizards. This has nothing to do with discrimination, but is responsible for their own lives. Midgard glanced at Leonard, for example, you, would you choose to live with werewolves? No, Leonard said without hesitation. That's it, Midgard shrugged, and led Leonard into the house deep in the yard. The middle-aged man stopped at the door and acted as a guard. Inside, Leonard and Midgard sat down at a table, on which was a pile of dusty gold coins, looking very inviting. What's the matter with these galleons? Leonard asked as he put the white essence in his pocket on the table. Oh, these things are the private property of that guy Fenrir. He buried all the galleons that he squeezed out of his men. Midgard pouted. Stupid. It's really stupid. Money can only be useful if it is used in a useful place, otherwise it's just a pile of beautiful metal. Leonard agrees with Midgard's evaluation. This is not to say that it is a good habit not to save money and spend it all, but money is a thing other than the necessary buffer money, the other money is either used for money to make money, or used to improve yourself, simply to look good idiot. For an organization, some benefits and some rewards can effectively improve the enthusiasm and sense of belonging of the subordinates, and squeezing the subordinates to make money is simply a waste of money. No wonder Midgard said he was dead after Fenrir was seriously injured. With this performance, whoever dies if he doesn't die. By the way, Fenrir is really dead? Leonard asked. Midgard looked at Leonard helplessly. He's dead, it's true, I cut off his head with my own hands, do you want to show it to you? Okay. Leonard nodded without hesitation, and then added, it's not that I don't trust you, I'm just worried that you will be cheated. Midgard sneered, and took out a blood-stained bag from under the table and threw it on the table, then take it and have a look. We agreed in advance, so don't be so scared that you won't be able to sleep at night. Leonard opened the cloth bag, and saw a face with droopy skin and eyes covered. Even though he was prepared in his heart, he was still taken aback, how did he become like this? His cheekbones were smashed by me, and he didn't have time to heal, so that's how it turned out. Midgard spread his hands, I told you to be careful, and you won't be able to sleep because of the fright. It's not that I can't sleep, I just think Fenrir's death is very strange. Leonard wrapped up Fenrir's head, why are you covering his head so well? Take it to the Ministry of Magic to receive a reward. He has a wanted warrant on him, Midgard said. A wanted warrant, how much is he worth? Leonard was a little allergic when he heard the wanted warrant. After all, this was his job in his previous life. Are you still interested in this? Midgard looked at Leonard in surprise, and said in a serious manner, the bounty offered by the Ministry of Magic is 1,000 galleons, but I guess I can get six or 700. It's almost the same, the big heads come from the families who were hurt by Fenrir, some of their family members were bitten by Fenrir and escaped, but many of them missed the treatment time and became werewolves. Speaking of this incident, Midgard had a very bad expression on his face, they once released some bounties through the channel of the Dark Wizard, and they only need to settle the settlement to get them. The total is about one or two thousand. Sounds good, Leonard said. You'd better not think too much, this time it's because we were lucky, otherwise the two of us would not be Fenrir's opponents at all, every wizard with a bounty like him is not easy to deal with, you should be honest go to Hogwarts instead. Midgard warned. Don't worry, I won't play with my life, Leonard said. Let's just order it directly. Don't you want to buy white fresh essence? It's all here. This is different from the previous one, Midgard said, looking at the clear white essence on the table. Seeing Leonard's puzzled eyes, Midgard explained, I heard from Ziggs that someone was selling white fresh essence with good effect but poor quality, so I bought a bottle. It turns out that you bought that bottle, Leonard suddenly realized don't worry, this batch is more effective, and I have improved the process. Is that so? Midgard nodded, then follow the agreement, 10 galleons a bottle. No, you bought them all from me, of course I'll give you a discount, just 5 galleons a bottle. Leonard said generously. In the future, he may often buy some prohibited magic materials, and Midgard's help is indispensable. 
although he has saved Midgard himself, but unilaterally asking for this kind of favor will be exhausted sooner or later, and he will still be full after a meal. Leonard it's still clear. Hearing Leonard's words, Midgard's expression softened a lot. Five galleons are too few, how about it, eight galleons? Midgard said. No, it's just five gallons. If you don't agree, I won't sell it. Leonard jumped off the chair, making a gesture to take away the white fresh essence. Okay, I'll listen to you, five galleons. Midgard had a dumbfounding expression on his face. There are five bottles in total, twenty-five galleons. She picked out twenty-five galleons from the pile on the table, put them in a cloth bag and handed them to Leonard, and then took a large cloth bag and filled them with three hundred galleons and handed them to Leonard. And this is the money for the box of materials I promised you. Take it, and I'll ask Marcus to send you back to Diagon Alley later. As for the bounty, I'm sorry, although I really want to share it with you, the injured werewolf is too too much. It's okay, I don't need so much money, but who is Marcus? Leonard took the bag and asked suspiciously. It's the one you plan to knock out, my confidant. Midgard Nunu pointed to the middle-aged man outside the door. Well, it seems that I almost offended your confidant, he won't speak ill of me in the future, will he? Leonard jokingly said. No, Marcus is a mute. He once went mad and killed his wife and children, and bit off his own tongue after waking up. Midgard said lightly. A very cruel thing, but Midgard's tone was very flat. Leonard was silent for a moment, intending to change the topic, by the way, aren't werewolves very strong in self-healing ability? Why do you still need to buy white fresh essence? He noticed just now outside that many werewolf injuries showed signs of recovery, and there was no need for treatment at all. The night of the full moon will be in a few days. If you already have injuries on your body, you may not be able to go crazy on the night of the full moon. Midgard said with a sigh. The atmosphere became heavy again. Leonard hesitated and asked, can the werewolf wizard really lose control of himself on the night of the full moon? Yes, even us werewolf wizards who resist our hearts, Midgard said in a low voice, this is a curse we cannot escape. Can't escape, can't it, isn't there wolf poison potion? Leonard frowned slightly, and tried to ask, can no potion solve your problems? Why are you asking this? Midgard looked at Leonard amusedly, do you want to be the savior of our werewolves? Just treat me as kind-hearted and don't want others to suffer, Leonard said. Come on. Kind-hearted people can't kill Fenrir so decisively like you, and want to kill Fenrir, who has a vengeance. Midgard's eyes softened, I appreciate your kindness, but it's not necessary wasted too much time for us. Maybe I'm a genius, just tell me if anyone has studied this potion, Leonard said stubbornly. He is not a savior, and the werewolf group has nothing to do with him. He just thinks that Midgard, who has a better relationship with him, shouldn't suffer. Seeing Leonard's firm eyes, Midgard smiled unconsciously. Okay, stubborn kid, Midgard said helplessly, I heard that some people are indeed researching the issue of werewolf wizards and developing related potions, but I don't know much about this, so I don't know the details. For the situation, you can ask Giggs, he has a lot of contacts in this area, and he may know something. Giggs, Leonard frowned, if that's the case, then you should go to him to buy my white essence. Why, Midgard was taken aback, he's not an idiot, he won't be unaware if we trade around him. Then I'll be on his blacklist, let alone sniffing out information. Leonard touched his chin, sometimes it's like this, you have to give something first if you want to get something. Who told him not to know the formula of wolf's poison? The next day, Leonard continued to learn magic at Ollivander's wand shop. On the way, he made a detour and found Giggs who had just opened the shop. Morning, Wilhelm. Seeing Leonard coming over, Giggs greeted him, how are you thinking? I took that business, Leonard said, but you were responsible for providing the materials. No problem, then it's settled. I'll give you the ingredients and galleons, and you'll give me the white essence. Ziggs, who foresees that he will have a huge amount of galleons in his account, is a little excited. Are the materials given to you now? He asked. No, when I come back, I have other things to do, and I just have something to ask you for advice. Leonard shook his head. You are really busy, well, see you later. Giggs said. When he came to Ollivander's wand shop again, Ollivander had been waiting for Leonard in the shop for a long time, 
but his expression was a little strange, and he was looking at the list of students who had recorded the purchase of wands. Strange, it's almost the end of July, why hasn't it come yet? Did I miscalculate the time? Ollivander muttered in a low voice, not even noticing Leonard's arrival. Mr. Ollivander, what are you talking about? Leonard asked suspiciously. Oh, I was looking at the list of Hogwarts freshmen this semester, and there is a student who has not come, I am a little surprised. Ollivander threw the list aside, but I don't need to worry about it, let's continue to test the wand. A student never came, that must be Harry Potter, he is probably still trapped by his uncle, and will not be taken to Diagon Alley by Hogwarts Keykeeper and Gamekeeper Hagrid until the end of the month. But in this way, Harry Potter would definitely live in the Leaky Cauldron until school started, and he and the Savior would inevitably run into each other. The Savior's side is always full of all kinds of accidents. If possible, Leonard would not want to touch him at all, and just want to grow up by himself. But he can't ignore Harry Potter too deliberately, this is very offending, and people who are hated by the protagonist generally don't end well. Thinking about it feels troublesome. By the way, we also need to pay attention to Quirinus Quirrell who does not know when he will appear. This guy carries Voldemort with him. He is the real source of danger. Others carry Grandpa with him. He carries a monster with a bald head and no nose, which can be called a time bomb. Voldemort would definitely stop by Diagon Alley in order to steal the Philosopher's Stone hidden in Gringotts. Although Leonard, an underage wizard, should not be noticed, he might be targeted if he behaved too aggressively. Leonard planned to be more stable in the next period of time, not because he was afraid, but because of Kongshin. Wilhelm, what are you thinking? Come here quickly. Ollivander called out the dummy, and shouted blankly when he saw Lu Nan still there. Oh sorry, I was just distracted. Leonard walked to Ollivander's side, what magic are you learning today? Today's magic is not in a hurry. At this time, you should first review the disarming spell you learned yesterday. Ollivander shook his head, from the performance of the disarming spell and the fluorescent spell, it can be judged that this wand does indeed possess the power of the Elder Wand. To strengthen the effect, the remaining few spells are mainly for observing the effect, but the most important thing at the moment is to let you learn to control this wand. You should have noticed that this wand will amplify your spells indiscriminately. This is a good thing, but if you can't control this enhancement, it will cause a lot of trouble. Yes, it will get in the way when I'm learning magic, and it's easy to hurt others and myself. Leonard still remembered the fake wand that brushed past his face yesterday, and it almost shot him in the head. So control your own magic power, try to make your spells have the power of normal spells, and get used to this kind of control. This will not only allow you to adapt to the power, but it will also be beneficial for you to learn wandless or silent casting in the future. Ollivander pointed to the dummy. Come on, use the disarming curse. This time you have to feel every magic power you use, and then control this amount one at a time. I know it's difficult, but it's worth your time to try. Leonard nodded and started today's training according to Ollivander's request. Soon, one morning passed, Leonard successfully learned to control his magic power output, and now he can use a disarming spell that is only slightly stronger than the normal disarming spell. After reaching this point, Ollivander began to teach Leonard the restoration charm, which is a very basic auxiliary magic, and it took Leonard only 10 minutes to learn it. This is all thanks to Ollivander's magic control after teaching the disarming curse in advance, which made Leonard's efficiency in mastering magic very fast. And the repair spell released by this powerful wand can indeed repair the wand. That's it for today, go back and rest. Ollivander looked at Leonard's wand repaired with the repairing spell and was satisfied. He finally completed a powerful wand comparable to the Elder Wand. Although it can only be used by Leonard, it can be said to have fulfilled one of his long-cherished wishes. And Leonard is also very excited, because of the existence of this wand, he has learned a lot of magic in advance, and the effect of this wand is really great. It can be said that everyone is happy. After leaving Ollivander's wand shop, Leonard went to Zig's pharmacy as promised, and took ten parts of white fresh extract and ten parts of wormwood from him. Although these ten parts of white fresh extract were of no use to Leonard, he still brought them for the simple reason that he didn't want Ziggs to know that the reason why he was able to brew the super effective white fresh essence was because the plant was picked up by him. Fortified white fresh. Leonard is careful when it comes to keeping his secrets. 
There are 10 materials in total, you can only waste one at most, I need to see at least 9 bottles of white fresh essence, Giggs told Leonard after handing the materials, if there is less, you will have to deduct money. You are really stingy, you can earn at least 90 galleons from this business, and you actually take a share of the materials with me. Leonard took the package full of bottles and cans and complained. That's different, this is the rule. Ziggs said seriously, it's the same for most potion masters, unless your potion ability is so good that others have to modify the rules for you. Well, what you said makes sense. By the way, do you have any advice for me about the vitality tonic? Leonard asked. Haha, you really failed. Compared with Baishan essence, vitality tonic is an introduction to potion. The treatment of Horklap juice is very important. Ziggs smiled gloatingly, but he did not hide it. Know some tips and precautions told Leonard. Leonard nodded to show that he was listening carefully, and after Ziggs finished speaking, he asked indifferently, Mr. Ziggs, you have been in the circle of potionists all year round, and you should know a lot of news bar. Of course, I have connections with many famous potion masters. Ziggs said proudly. Then have you ever heard of potions that cure werewolves? Leonard asked with raised eyebrows. This is no longer a hint, but a blatant statement. This is to tell Giggs that your big client is actually an acquaintance of mine. Sure enough, Giggs understood, and was silent for a while, pulling the corners of his mouth. You guy, are you really only 11 years old? He wondered, you know Midgard. Well, it's just that she didn't know that I brewed the white essence bot from you. Leonard admitted. Giggs asked, in the end, you didn't bypass me and directly deal with her just to inquire about this information. Well, I don't want to play charades, and speaking directly can save a lot of trouble. Leonard said. It makes sense, I like to do business with people like you. It seems that we will have a lot of cooperation opportunities in the future. Ziggs gave a thumbs up, and then said, I really heard that the medicine for werewolves however, I remember that the potion seems to be called Wolfsbane Potion, which can keep werewolves sane, and the main ingredient is probably aconite from the name. Giggs analyzed the name of the potion from a professional point of view. And then, do you know the recipe? Leonard asked. Of course I don't know. Giggs rolled his eyes, I've only heard of this potion, and the owner of the potion is Damocles Belby, a weirdo. I don't have much contact with him. To be honest, I I don't even understand why someone would develop such a potion. What you said is a bit too much. Some werewolves don't want to hurt others, but that Mr. Belby just wants to help werewolves. Leonard said with a frown. I know, isn't Midgard such a werewolf wizard? I also believe in Mr. Belby's determination to help werewolves, but his thinking is too ideal. Zig said helplessly, I remember the first time I heard the name Wolf's Poison was 10 years ago, but you see, until now he has not even found anyone who is willing to subsidize his large-scale production of Wolf's Poison. Why? Leonard asked suspiciously, werewolves need this potion very much. There are dozens of werewolves just in the alley. But they have no money. Giggs spread his hands. No one wants to work with werewolf wizards. It is difficult for them to get a high enough salary. Even if they have a little money, they will often be thrown to Saint. Mungo after the full moon night. Street. Mungo's hospital for magical injuries and injuries, the best hospital in the wizarding world in Europe. And rich werewolves are often habitual offenders of stealing and robbery. They don't care about the damage caused to the surroundings after becoming werewolves, so naturally they won't buy Wolfbane Potion. Ziggs shook his head helplessly, so, investing in Wolfsbane Potion can be said to be nothing. Giggs' answer caught Leonard off guard, but he understood. Investors invest for the sake of making money. You talk about your ideals with him unless your ideals can turn into money in the future. As for doing charity, discrimination against werewolf wizards is an overall trend, and the contagious nature of werewolves determines that few people will sympathize with werewolves, and it is impossible to do charity for them. That's why the Wolfsbane potion couldn't be popularized, even after Damocles Bell was awarded the second-class medal of Merlin for disclosing the Wolfsbane potion, the situation didn't get better. Except for a few werewolf wizards with good families, other werewolf wizards still cannot drink Wolfsbane potion because of the high cost and difficult brewing process. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.